In that case, I would like to officially uh, call to order the September 17, uh, September 18, 2018 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. And as always, we'll start with the roll, roll call. I am Brian Barraby. Emily Winner. Kit McNamara. Jeff Bryan. Rebecca Longwell. Excellent. I just want to start quickly tonight um, to our thousands of fans watching at home. The Public Ways Safety Committee uh, is currently working on the project to cross 117 so people can get to the historic and lovely Houghton Building. And for those of us who find reason to be in the historic and lovely Houghton Building uh, often, um, it's an excellent job. I think it's wonderful that they, they took that on, and I think it is a great addition to the town. I'll suck it. All right. In your role. That said, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider the notice of intent submitted by Seth Donahoe of Ducharme Villas regarding the proposed buffer zone grading on lots 13 and 18 on Moderator Way of Peace Farm Subdivision. Public meeting to begin right now. So you can disregard my note on that saying we're waiting the DEP number. We did receive it with no comments. Okay. Good evening, Brandon Ducharme, Ducharme Dillis. Uh, here on behalf of the owners of the Keys Farm Subdivision. As I'm sure you're familiar, we've been in it before you guys a few times this past year. We did a ANRAD abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, which basically went through and certified all the wetland resource areas uh, throughout the subdivision. And then we filed a notice of intent uh, for the road and drainage. Um, and now as we design, we do the septic designs and lay out some of the house lots. Um, we've got a couple lots here that were wound up with some minor grading uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone, which is the adjacent upland resource area. Um, this is Hudson Road here. We'll start with lot 13. This is Hudson. This is Danforth. This is the proposed road moderator way that comes up here. It's a cul de sac about 1,500 feet in length. And this filing is for a shared septic system. It's, the system is located on lot 13 which is this lot here. There's a bordering vegetated wetland that kind of comes up. You can kind of see the slope is a little bit better, but it goes under Hudson Road here. The wetland extends up. This is kind of the, the end of the uh, wetland area here. There's a 100-foot buffer zone that comes into the lot. Um, this was an open space subdivision, so it's a cluster. So basically, you know, we've set aside in excess of the 33% open space, and we've kind of clustered all the, uh, the development right around this cul-de-sac road. So it's kind of tight. We've got, we've got a well in the front, we've got the house, and then this is a shared septic system. We're using uh, Presby and Viro septic, and this system here services this house as well as 12 and 11. So the house on 12 and 11 have septic tank, pump chamber, that's basically a force main that comes all the way around this drainage basin comes down and feeds the leaching field here. The leaching field is located outside the 100-foot buffer, which is marked here in orange, but there's a small portion of the breakout grading uh, that extends into the buffer zone there. So it'll basically be a three-to-one slope that kind of basically comes down from the raised septic system that ties into the existing grade, uh, we're proposing erosion set and control at the base of that. Um, we'll obviously have to do some clearing in order to, to get the grading in there. Relatively straightforward. And that's the only buffer zone incursion? Is just the back end of that for these three lots? Yes, yeah. Yeah, we're able to avoid most of it. Yeah. One I can roll into the other one. The other one, so you kind of just focus here. This is the cul-de-sac. There's one lot, lot 18, which actually has frontage out on Hudson Road here. And there's, there's a couple isolated wetlands on either side of 18, and both of those buffer zones extend into lot 18. And really, the limits of the property are here in pink. And there's a wetland on either side. Those buffer zones kind of come up, and then it, it opens up. Uh, it's all outside of the buffer zone up here in the back. But really, in order to come off a of Hudson Road, in order to, this is a, it's cutting into a hill. So just in order to kind of relax those slopes, down to the driveway. We've got a very, very little bit on this side, and then really just we're coming in about maybe 20 feet into the buffer zone there for the driveway. And again, erosion control and everything at the, at the base of that grading. I'm assuming after the driveway goes in, it's re naturalizing, right? It's going to be great and. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously it would be low mid seeded. Um, 
know, we could, I mean, it, it is a cut slope, and if we wanted to, we could, um, we could do some plantings, some shrub plantings or something in there just to kind of renaturalize it and restore it back to, with some native bushes. Yeah, as it comes in, into the, because it looks like when it's done, the driveway itself is, avoids both buffer zones, right? It kind of sneaks yeah. in between both. Yeah, so it's it's grading coming off the orange right. side, the driveway itself is out, it's really just kind of some, some of the, the grading there to, to be able to keep this slope at a reasonable Right. What's, what's, what's on the other side now? As far as plantings go, I'm just curious what it looks uh, this like. It's all wooded inside the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, that's the extent. So it would be a three on one slope, so it's kind of steep to put a tree on. We could, we could probably put some low bush blueberry or something on there. But the original plan right now is just to, just to seed it and grass it. Yeah. And again, since it is a cut slope, we're cutting in, obviously, the slope kind of goes away from the wetlands. Mm -hmm. So it's really no. We, we have the erosion control there, but really everything's going to kind of come down and head down this way towards Hudson Road. And then what do you have for the erosion control? Uh, I think it's just straw walls. Mm -hmm. Yes, it comes down the other side. So it looks like that's. Is that the high point? And on this side, is it is it high? Do they both come down towards the driveway, or is this like slough off the other way? Um, this side, basically, both these wells are in a low area. Yep. So you can kind of see the grades coming down this way. All right. So as they kind of cut into that slope, it's going to kind of V in. And then for runoff for the driveway, is it just going to be uh, like how the driveway is tapered in? Like, well, um, so the way it is now, and obviously once they grade this out, all the flow is going to come back onto the driveway. So it's just going to the that way. And ultimately, it will probably filter down and end up you know, heading into either one of those low, low areas there. Questions? Either? You know, what, what happens, uh, this may be a little off topic, but you know, yeah. if you have the shared system, yeah. that happens if you lose power. Is uh, it still so typically you lose the water too, right? too. so so you know, nothing nothing works unless somebody has a generator and then yeah. if the well works then obviously the septic would work as well it's curious that you know there's looking at it if there's, they're going into a tank the whole <coughs> day's worth of waste yeah so the way title five the state environmental code is is basically the pump chambers since those those are pump systems yeah. like yeah. any even just a single House that has a pump right. system. There's right. 40 hour storage oh, okay. in there, which basically okay. is. So, so the event you actually the pump fails or something, it, it gives it gives obviously ample storage there to get somebody in. Get somebody the in there. Yeah. I, I, I know it's off, off topic, but I'm just kind of curious, but just yeah. all that stuff. Anybody, anybody here tonight to comment on this project? Did you have any thoughts? I don't. I will say I didn't know if our new members wanted to go out and see this site. I know we have looked at it. At least the members that have been here for a while have seen the subdivision plans related to the roadway for the common driveway, however it's being established, and then the lots associated with that. So that's lot 18, so probably lot Third, is that lot 13? This is the 18. That's 18. So lot 13 is within those lots. And the same thing with 18, it was shown in the subdivision plan, but I didn't know if our new members wanted to follow up and take a look. Uh, Does what you're asking tonight have anything to do with lot 18? I mean, the second. I mean, you're asking yeah, for both. Yeah, it's both. So it's for both. This is for the driveway, yeah. Okay, so does this one hook into the, oh, this is just for the driveway. This just has, has nothing to do with the septic system. Uh, no, okay. just just the drive to the okay. access to getting up on the right. road. Right. Yeah. So you have to fix it with two things. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. Okay. So in, correct me if I'm wrong, the reason why they're bringing forward the two is because these are the ones that will have some impact to the buffer area, not the extreme. Right. Um, instead of showing one at a time. Um, and I don't know if there's more. 
I think there's going to be one more. I think lot, lot eight might have, again, it's for the septic system grade. But it's great. Okay. Almost all these lots were kind of right up against it, but we we're, we were close enough, like just say the buffer zone was here. Yeah. We just, it's it's far enough away from the leaching field that we could do like a boulder wall, or you know, basically to kind of pull that grade back. Because obviously we could avoid it. That was the goal. Um, does anybody want to go out and take a look? I don't know if Bill's been out there. Uh, I'll, take, I'll take a trip if Bill's interested. But. It might be. It would be impossible just to set a date now to go for a quick site visit. Sure. Just, I mean, it wouldn't hurt me to see exactly where these lots are. I think I can picture them pretty well, but it would not hurt. Yeah, yeah they've been, uh, I mean, they're working out there, obviously, with the order conditions with the road. Yeah. So uh, they've got the road pretty well roughed in. So, yeah. um, so that said, if we were going to try to schedule a site visit, would you want to, would you mind continuing it and leaving it open, or would you want us to close it tonight? Um, leave it open, just in case. Yeah. Good. All right. In that case, I'm going to make a motion that we continue the public hearing for uh, lots 1318 on moderator farm of the Keys Farm subdivision until our next meeting, October 2nd. Leave at seven. Wait, let me first. Uh, yes, so seven fifteen. At seven fifteen. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then I'll see here we go. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Good Good things a lot of dirt. What's that? Had to move a lot of dirt there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's a cut as you kind of come up. So right now, basically doing that cut and it's filled up. Yeah, it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have seven fifteen exactly, but you want to get the discussion in first? Um. Yes. Do we have? Anyone from 238 South Bulmer Road? Do you want to come forward? Uh, that, I'm going to print out two copies. Walk us through yeah, your sure. So I'm Doug Story. Uh, I am the contractor. My company's two-story building for the Lowers. Um, we have been building a project at their house at 238 South Bolton, which involved first building a garage, barn, and then doing some additions on the house. All of this was permitted this winter, fall winter, um, and. Everything has been built. We're not done, but everything's been built. Um, but um, we contacted National Grid. Um, they, they have an electric service that comes from the street, two poles on their property, and then overhead from this side of the garage to the house. And um, this is Frank Chiotto, of course. Yeah, exactly. um, and uh, you know, we had intended to tap off of that pole bring underground service to the barn that we just built, and then also bring it underground to the house to get rid of the overhead lines. Um, when we contacted them, they came out and did a site visit, and they told us, well, those poles, which are 50 years old and in the woods, are not up to current spec. So for us to even allow you to do anything to the service, we have to put new poles in and rerun it. And basically, the spec is that the poles have to be within 10 feet of the driveway or a accessible surface that a vehicle can drive on. This is this is all actually a hill here and wooded as you can see mm -hmm. from the pictures. So you know basically for them to um, service, you know, here's the here's kind of the best picture. So this is on the inside portion. If you're driving in the driveway yeah, right. you have the mill inside of the driveway area to your left. The, the pond the is on the other side. Left here right. Um, and so what we came up with was two poles that were within 10 feet of the um, current driveway 
um, essentially the same location. It's kind of funny. It, it's hard to tell, but this is the existing pole, and this is where we're going to put the new pole. So I mean, we're, we're literally moving the poles about 10 feet just to And you're not it. grading or anything? No. Um, so, but, but running the line, you know, they take and they run a line straight from the pole in the street into where the poles would go, <coughs> and there are obviously trees in the way. So they said, we've got to take down, you know, six or eight trees um, in the way. And uh, we started looking at it, and then we noticed that another three trees on the hill were, you know, one was dead, two had big holes in the base of the tree, mm -hmm. and several other ones are hanging over the driveway, um, which ultimately, you know, could come down on the pole or could come down the driveway. So the homeowner said, we're going to, you know, put these poles in and take down the eight trees. We are going to take down all of these trees. So it's, it's not everything. We're not taking the big trees. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, four or five inch. Um, but everything that's pretty much hanging close to the driveway they want to take down. So how many oh, I have twenty I have twenty trees marked. Including yes, trees so like this and ground. including mm -hmm. three dead trees. Okay. So I didn't want to mince numbers. <laughs> um, and you know on this hillside was probably 150 trees, so you know we take those 20 trees down here, you know, and, we, and we are looking all the big trees. But we can't proceed with this until they have a letter from conservation saying you've reviewed it and approved it. Mm -hmm. And I initially contacted Rebecca and thought, well, we've already permitted this, and this is something we have to do for the project. So, right. but it made sense to come in and show you what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I apologize for missing the last meeting. I uh, had a long day for it now. So, uh, we're basically looking to determine if we think this is ancillary to the existing order, right? That this so, if it's a field amendment, basically, which in terms of replacing the poles that are necessary to replace, I would see a reasonable yeah. argument for that for discussion for that and then so far as the tree removal the dead trees I could see that um, the saplings I could see some if it's in within the line of where they have to basically run the wire um, but because you are technically still within the riverfront area, I would like to try and reduce the tree removal, even though they are snap saplings. Um, but that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, this whole thing ended up being a proverbial catch-22. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the sizing, adding the building, and, and the, the additions necessitated an electric upgrade. Mm -hmm. and the catch-22 is they say, well, you know, like Doug said, you'd have to update your entire infrastructure right. to do it. So mm -hmm. you can't just move the driveway. Uh, no, no, we, we don't. We, we, don't we, 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 we don't want to go this so way. For sure, so right? my my question is, um, have, we, have we gone out and taken a look at the trees that, that we, is that something that we need to take a look at? Which tree comes down? Because I was looking at some of these pictures, and you know, a couple of trees are pretty large, but I don't know whether they're in the way. No, there's a hole I think that one you're looking right. at has a big hole in the bottom. Yeah, I see that, but yeah. you know that doesn't mean it's a, a bad thing, right? Uh, I mean, actually, it does. Down eventually. <laughs> eventually, they all come down, but um, I, so, I just was wondering whether that was something that might just go out there just to say, you know, so we can see, because it's hard to tell from the, from the pictures are great. It's hard to tell from the pictures, but for me, anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't mind going out and just taking a look at, look at like that tree and that tree and that tree, you know. 
Mm -hmm. It would be possible just to mark the trees, everyone you think that would need to go down. It looks like they're already marked. They're already marked. Right. So they yellow things all around them. It's yellow guess. and blue, and there's no difference between yellow and blue. I just ran out of tape. So <laughs> every tree that has a, a, something around it is a is tree, it, is tree. We're, we're recommending to take down. As I said, if we, if we only took down the trees that were in the line of the power, you know, direct line, and the damaged trees, it would probably be 11 trees. Yeah. instead of 20 so um, you know so and, and the, other, the other point I want to make was just that Mark Case is going to do the tree work and he's the tree warden mm -hmm. and you know if he sees a damaged tree he takes it down I mean that's obviously yeah. something yeah. that he yeah. you know has, has the purview for yeah. so um, I, it's fine with me if you want to go look at it yeah I would I would actually you know, I did I did try to leave all the big trees and, and I pretty much marked everyone right next to the driveway because yeah, you know, it looks like I could see that from there. Um, they just felt like, you know, they said they've had delivery trucks that have hit trees, that, you know, they've got a very narrow driveway, mm -hmm. and they said, you know, if we're going to be taking a few trees down, let's get the ones right next to the driveway out of there. Because, sure. you know, they're not. Um, I'm curious what the electric company needs for space to put those poles in. Mm -hmm. Well, the 10 feet, basically. Yeah, yeah. For them to get in to work around the tube and just things get in their way. Um, but going out to take a look and seeing what trees are marked, it makes a lot of sense, uh, especially you knowing this area is yeah. very sensitive. I, can I ask, is anybody here to comment on this tonight on uh, 238 South Fulton Road? Yeah, I, can, I certainly understand that you know, the tree looks like it's going to fall over 90% of the time, it'll fall over. You know, so I, I just would like to see what you're sure. doing. I did not try to be. Welcome so does the commission see this as a field amendment mm -hmm. or something that they will need to create a subsequent filing for? Personally, I would lean towards a field amendment um, because it, it does seem it's, it's basically necessary for them to cover the, right. the current orders. Right. They're not going to be able to do those without it. You could evidence. have known about this before when, you know. No, yeah. again, and, yeah, and, and sure he'd hope not really to have to do it. Not like to do it. Yeah. 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 Sorry, just out of curiosity, does National Grid maintain the poles once they're set up on the land, or do they only maintain the ones out on the road? Well, they have to maintain them. Because it's their own poles, it's not, it doesn't become... Yeah, and they even said that they would pay to put the poles in because they're forcing the people to do this. Oh, that's nice. Which is unusual, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. so, nice. And it, you know, they are, the house was built in the 50s, so it, it's 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. well, I just would like to go just... Eyeball it if you don't mind. I mean, yeah, so I go. I'm around tomorrow. I'm around Friday. I mean, we don't have to make it up. I mean, I'd be happy to meet you there anytime that's convenient for you. And then if you said, well, say, let's try and save this tree or that tree, we can well, pull, the, pull the tape. <coughs> that would be so, something we all have to get involved in. But I would. I think the think it's a good idea. I, I do. No, I I, I do. Um, in but, terms of next steps, I think if the commission would like to authorize me to issue a letter following the site visit that okays it, we would be able to do that under a field amendment. Yeah. Is that something that would work? Because then mm -hmm. people yeah. can get out there and take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable, comfortable with that too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know how far are you how far are you along on the property for the people to move in. They're ready to move oh, in no, tomorrow. They're, they're there. Well, they're not ready to build in your garage. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's we have no power to the garage, and we can't get it. I mean, we're going to be on a two-month schedule for National Grid anyway once we get the right. approval. Okay. So we're trying to get it done before winter, frankly. Yeah, that's so, a good idea. You know. All right. All right. But it's, good. It's so then we can schedule about that. I think that's a good idea, Rebecca. <clears throat> can I see Emily nodding yes, though? So. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And we'll do that. Um, I will throw out a doodle poll and then contact you for those who wish to come out on site. Um, or I know I forwarded your email to the commission, so right. it's easier for you to find a time when you want to go out. Okay. I mean, I've got the pictures and the email from you. I guess you are the one that sent the email to yes. her. Yes. I did. Yeah. 
and just say, if you want to do a poll, because we can all get out there at the same time. Oh, yeah. It's probably, yep. yeah, okay. it's so we'll big. try and do that. Um, but I can be there any day. I mean, I, live, I actually live down the street. And yeah. We're working there every day, so. Okay. I just don't want you to run into that. Well, he said get rid of this tree. He said don't get rid of this no, tree. Yeah. Yeah. She says this tree's no, no, no. okay. And it's just, you know, I, I'm sure that, well, I haven't seen it, so, but I just like to take a look at it just to make sure that sure. we're not saying okay on something we haven't seen. You got it. So you can expect to hear from me regarding a site visit um, within well tomorrow. I'll send out the doodle poll. So whenever I hear from okay. everyone, hopefully it's by the end of next week, if not sooner, in terms of when the site visit will be. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank and then you'd be able to issue a letter yes. immediately calling that I could yes. yep. send a national grid. Yes. Okay. That's that's you where you start. Break out your Break out your Break out your You get just to let you know. I got a call from Jane at the country covered. We're going to reestablish the erosion control okay. on the house next door. The yep. fire department's going to burn it down in October for training. Yep. So I'll just mm -hmm. give you a call. Well, you know, the next you guys to come Yeah, yeah so once the erosion control set, the controls up, just right. give me a call. Nobody ever saw what we had. Yeah. We had the first and meeting then, on it. Uh, we're going to right house there between the, the mobile station and the covered. Yep. Yeah. And nobody on the commission uh, could picture the house there. Yeah, yeah. Right? Everybody was like, there's a house there? Yeah. There's a white house right between mobile and the Thank you. Which is getting converted to commercial and it will be in the town like that or something. Yeah. So, it's so up you're saying, on the hill? No, it's it's just right there. It's this little yeah. white house right between country oh, covered and mobile and nobody's like it just blocked out of everybody's mind. Right. Nobody can picture it. Right inside. Yep, now I can there now I see it every time ever since yeah. we had a contact. <laughs> I wondered who was living there one time. Apparently no one's lived there for no. twenty five years or something. So we've, we've been through this fire department burning a house down before, right, Rebecca? Yes. <laughs> that was there, a lot different. <laughs> yeah. There were no big trees next to this one. This one was up in smoke. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm here. I should have some guys. Should change that to a, somebody got Aerosmith. Walk this way, walk this way. Yeah. yeah. The Bolton Conservation Commission will now uh, continue a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider uh, the request for determination of applicability submitted by Sam Larrabee of Goddard Consulting regarding the proposed minor grading associated with construction of the of uh, a proposed improvement regarding proposed improvements to the existing driveway. I do apologize. So the Conservation Commission, just so we're clear, is now continuing a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider a notice of intent for 21 Century Mill Road uh, proposed improvements to an existing driveway. Okay, and the other one is? Well, I, I was going to have that okay. question for Rebecca in a minute. No, that's fine. Um, do we need to open the other two um, at the same time? I have a little bit of that I will help you. <coughs> Just to yeah, so ask the questions across, right? You have to open the other three. Yes. If there's another hearing that is, needs to be heard in advance, if you would help those other people, I don't mind waiting. And do you want to do that? Do you mind? I don't mind at all. No. Okay. That'd be fine. So, all right. Yeah. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we, you know, we can keep it over. We still yeah. discuss it, right? We don't Thank have to continue for 10 minutes. Um, 42 Harvard Road. That's the room.
Okay, so. Yes, no. The only farm in town in Brooks Boys and Ivy. Not the only. No, uh, no, I know. But this one is like world class. They have a right to do it. Yeah, yes, they do. It's a right to find it. Let's continue from last time. I'll turn it off. Yes. The Bolton Conservation Commission will now continue the public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233 to consider the notice of intent submitted by Seth Donahoe of Fushar and Dulles regarding the proposed driveway and crossing located at 42 Harvard Road, the public meeting to be held this evening, September 18, 2018. Again, for Fushar and Fushar and Dulles, here on behalf of Wayne and Elaine Wetzel, 42 Harvard Road, and as you said, a continued public hearing. The opening hearing, we kind of went over the project. This is the existing house, 117. It's, it's down here as you come up Harvard Road. Um, They've broken off two backland lots, and we filed a notice of intent for a shared driveway that comes down, and there's a wetland crossing here, and comes up into this uh, area outside of the buffer zone where the house and septics and wells will be. Uh, I think you guys had a site walk with Seth, had a chance to take a look at where the uh, wetland crossing area is. Um, there's about 275 square feet of wetland alteration there, and we have a closed uh, replication area with 550 square feet. Uh, say, I don't have many more questions regarding this one, but does anybody <coughs> additional questions? I mean, it's pretty clear. We went out there. What's yeah. going on? Is anybody here tonight to comment on this one? Rebecca, do you have additional thoughts on this one? Uh, I do not. Don't. All right. <laughs> the easiest one we've had. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, you just didn't want to interrupt. Did you have something else to say? No, okay, no. thank you. Was like, don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do have a question Please. regarding yes. um, erosion and sediment controls. Yeah. What is being proposed? So we have the uh, silt fence and straw walls basically coming down the property line here, wrapping around the limit of the driveway and the crossing. The wetland replication area is silt fence only, just to pre prevent any migration of seeds or anything from the hay. And then in terms of, and this will probably be shown in any sort of construction sequence um, or construction schedule, if the commission wishes to approve the project, it's not a temporary crossing to access the two back lots to clearing, it's where constructing the roadway, putting in the actual permanent crossing, and then accessing the rear, to your understanding? Yeah, I mean, typically, you know, once the contract was to build it, they'll usually provide the construction sequence, but, you know, I would recommend that they do it similar to how we did Main Street landers down there, where they basically built up to the crossing, and once yeah. they had that in, were able to get, because basically got to get a vehicle. Um, this is a four-sided box culvert, yep. so it's it's like a septic tank delivery truck. They basically need to be able to get that down in here, and they've got a hoist on there to be able to set that structure in place. So then they could build the crossing, and then build on the other side after once they get that in. Okay, but just that would be your thought process. That yes. Yeah. They would construct that prior to doing any work out in the back land lots. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. In case I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve the, uh, I'm sorry, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing for 42 Harvard Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to make a motion that we issue an order of conditions for 42 Harvard Road as currently drafted and submitted at our number 2018 meetings. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.
So we have a, another relatively brief discussion item um, related to 442 Hudson Road, where the existing retaining wall, this had come before us previously um, to do some improvements on the property, mostly within the same footprint and then some tree removal involved. The existing retaining wall is eroding and in need of repair and or replacement. And so I had suggested that the owners come forward and speak to the commission again, whether it would be seen as a build amendment for the repair or replacement, or would they need to do a subsequent Picture. Do you remember so the remember. retaining wall is on the opposite side of this, mm -hmm. right. to my understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and on that plan, so as you come down the driveway from Hudson Road, the green is where you highlight it. So when you come to the front of the home. Yeah. Yeah, it's the going in here in that's, that's the pond. Yeah. And it's a steep grade relative. Yeah, the grade yeah. drops right yeah. off. Yeah. There is no retaining wall anymore. All the timbers have arrived and just collapsed. And now it's just it's getting concave. Yeah. Um, so the edge of the path is now starting to drop over the edge. I mean, looking at the pictures, to me at least, and we'll get them down, it looks like you, you absolutely need to replace that retaining mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. um, the question, can it be a field amendment to what already exists? When is that to the septic number? Great. Yeah, okay. that was a big. There was a lot of tree, not a lot, but there's tree removal going around, right? There was a lot of trees that were existing that were currently hanging over the house, and it was a new septic. Right? Throw them yeah. holding out. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and the end West Ponds. <laughs> West Ponds, basically, right at the end. Of, yeah, right at the end of the grading. West Pond is here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so it's a tight little peninsula, but everything kind of needed to be done around the house. The septic needed to be done. Um, and it looks clear that that retaining wall needs to be replaced. Yeah. What, did, what were you um, planning to replace it with? Man-made interlocking. Big blocks. Big blocks. <laughs> yeah, something that will Man-made yeah. interlocking. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is good. So you put some thought into it. Um, yeah. did, did anybody tell, like, when they create this, what would they need to do? Like, in order to get this wall in there, is it major excavation? Well, they, need get, they need to get uh, equipment down to the bottom of the down to the bottom of the hill down here. And there yeah. is sort of a path, and it's just some small saplings that have grown over the last 15 years, right. similar to the size of these, which have grown up since the wall is yeah. rotted. And these are all like two and three inches. They have to cut back like three or four feet. Yeah, to get anything in. to get out, and they might have to remove some of the trees well, to be getting to. build a wall, you know. Yeah, yeah, right, it's a thicker cut back like three feet. And the height of the wall is like two feet to three feet along yeah. that length. So not a big wall, it's just a wall. Who would actually go pay for this wall? <laughs> How long is the wall? Uh, it's it's probably about 20, 25 feet long. Wow. And is it just straight? It just cuts yeah, straight it's through here? Yeah, it's just straight. Can you sign the pictures down? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm not here tonight to discuss our road. Just got to ask. Your thoughts? Do you have thoughts on this? I mean, obviously, my thoughts weren't clear enough to say yeah. yes, it's a field amendment, um, but it is a pre existing structure. Um, it is something, obviously, that needs to be repaired and or replaced because of it is obviously a failure. My concern, I guess, isn't so much the repair and the replacement of the wall because to me you're doing it if you're doing it in the exact same footprint mm -hmm. um, the exact same area to me that's a, 
a simple answer of a field amendment in my mind and per the regulation, but because the proximity to the resource area, that's why I wanted the commission to really weigh in on it. Because at the very least, if the commission is to approve it even as a field amendment, you'll have to obviously provide additional um, sediment or erosion controls. Um, just because I would assume there is some excavation work to be had. Um, Unless they build the it further to, out, they're going right. to have to cut back the soil and yeah. get a level right. surface to build on. And right. And they could backfill it too, though. Yeah. Yep. But they'll still have to just disturb the existing, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. um, and maybe remove trees. There's, there are no large trees, it's just all the smaller saplings. No, this is all, it's all new growth. Yeah. It's all growing into each other, too. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. How long is this, this is structure right now? Do we, do we it's have uh, 20, 25 feet. 25 feet. Yeah. No, sure. There. What do they do with these railroad ties? Those yeah. are railroad ties, yeah. Well, if they're treated, what are you going to do to get rid of those? Leave it to the contractor. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to have a big bonfire on the <laughs> <laughs> kind of green again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're pressure treated, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not pressure treated. It's got. No, I was going to say, you're probably. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's tar treated. Yeah, it's tar treated. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is a tough one. Um, I run into that same thing where I think, for a large part, it was nice to hear you say that there would need to be something with further erosion controls because regardless, I'd be really curious again if there's a company you're working with, if they can provide somewhat some idea of what their construction process would be like. Um, I'm just trying to picture how they're going to get in there and if they're going to need to kind of clear everything between West Pond and that wall just to get in and work. Um, I don't know that they will. I just, it's, I mean. It looks like there's not much, I mean, not going out there, but there's not much. There's, right. there's already clearing here. Is that an access to the pond? And that's and West Pond. That before the property, that's a path that you walk down, and it looks like it was cleared at one point. Just yeah. Are yeah. Up. yeah. And the, the one guy that we came to give an appraisal, um, said that that's how they would enter through. Yeah. And then it levels off. It just looks like woods. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a little car pass. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. There. So it's probably there originally. And right. It's just a room. But like in this picture, right? Like this area. Yeah, sorry. sorry, no, you're fine, you're fine. Like, this is the pond, though, right? Isn't that the pond coming in? Yeah, like, yeah that's right that's on the, the pond. Canoe. There's the canoe and the pond. So, right you know, for them to get in up in here just seems like they're right on the pond. Like, I'm trying to think. It's, it's, it's a further way than I'm thinking of. This area here. down here is flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it and just this leads right into it. Leads up to the pond. All right, so that connects to it. Yeah. So options yeah. being yeah. to not approve or to approve as a field amendment and it would be shown on an as-built, um, I would be issuing a letter in that circumstance similar to the other stating you no know, additional erosion control needs to be put out, we need to know the extent of work and or um, it needs to be a more formal request and it would be under an RDA or notice of intent subsequent to this one that's currently open and they're working under. That makes sense to me. There's work going on there now, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or the, yeah, they have an open yeah, order. Yeah, pretty right. much done, but yeah. yeah. This was the old cesspools and yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I just forgot about those hidden things in the ground and stuff. Yeah. Gray water into the pond. Yeah. 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 Um, if you are able to 
issue things like that as part of a letter, just just additional things like mm -hmm. additional erosion controls or just some of the basic management practices we like to see working there. Yeah. Um, that makes me want to lean towards then more of just doing it as um, a field amendment. Okay. I can see the RDA on this one, but it's been out there filed. It clearly needs to be removed as part of that whole overall update. Um, if we have some controls over it, I'd be kind of more willing to do it as a field amendment. Um, but yeah, the erosion yeah, controls. Other thoughts. The, the erosion controls are probably the stick. <coughs> Okay. You know, if you're a contractor, let us know how that works out. Just so you know, putting more gray water into the pond, or whatever, putting it in the pond. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about the pod research studio in the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, if we were to do that, it would be probably a poll, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, just going to poll the commission quick on a good old yay or nay, everybody's favorite. Um, Before you do that, we were going to ask for um, a construction sequence from the contractor. Is that what we had said earlier? Not not necessarily construction, just a map, yeah. like methods, yeah. yep. right? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have depth engineering work done again, do we? Like do Sean and Dillis and so, as the, so when you present the as bill, what you need for the order of conditions, once you request a certificate of compliance anyways, um, that can be included on it. So at that time, once all the entirety of the project's complete, in order to completely close out the order of conditions that's currently open, you'll need to submit an as bill that is showing work done, um, the septic, the tree removals, the um, any grading that was done, so current existing grades, now that the work's complete, and it sounds like if the commission is determining this as a field amendment, that would be included in it as well. Okay. Um, and in addition to that, in terms of engineering for a field amendment, that's basically what the methods are gonna be in terms of how they're going to approach doing it. So they're going to do some extent of engineering, I guess you could say, to establish how they're going to put in um, the new retaining wall, if they're going to excavate any material, anything they need to backfill. That's all going to be in those methods that we're going to request. Okay, and the, but the contractor can From the contractor. So yep. it's not like we have to hire Duchamp. No, not again. until yeah. that. It's like a written description, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just right. kind of talking, are they using a machine to excavate, are they hand excavating, yeah. what kind of erosion control will be there, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Okay. Not like kelt, kelt wall. <laughs> like an engineer no, because comes it in and does... be within the same footprint. Right. If it's substantially larger, that's no longer a field amendment. If it's substantially, I was going to say smaller, if it just doesn't exist, that's a yeah, substantial so change, and on that slope, you're going to so need it anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Um, this is basically a replacement, though, right? It's a replacement, yeah. yeah. Yep. I guess the method is more about right. the excavation and access, yeah. right? right? If there's going to be trees removed. Right. And if he's going to take the, if he does a whole bunch of messing up on the cart path, how they're going to bring that back up or whatever it is. And, yeah. You know, that's right. I agree. It's going to let the leaves fall back down again. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where that leaves us, we probably pull right. Yeah. But we want to somewhat say conditional upon um, receiving construction methods and erosion controls to be used. <coughs> can we? Just, all the okay. models are still in place from mm -hmm. all the construction. Can we use those and just relocate them? No, so those need to be in place. Part of, and even that's just on every project open in town, they have to stay in place until a certificate of compliance is issued, and then you can pull them. Okay. Um, and that's just 
in the event, especially in New England, something happens or something's moved incorrectly, those resource areas are protected. That's why they're there in the first place. Okay. Um, but that ensures that then until we're able to get out there and an engineer is able to write the letter that says it's been completed in compliance and it is ready to be signed off by the commission in total, then we can pull them up because we know there's nothing else or there shouldn't be anything else that would have any impact to the resource areas. And so that's something we have to have Dusha and Dillis? Yes. Yep. Again, <coughs> the whole project, um, you'll have to have them issue a letter that says basically what I just said. They gone out there and seen that everything's done in compliance with the order of conditions. They submit that letter with an as-built plan showing everything that's been completed, everything that's been done, any differences in the work. And then myself and or the commission will be out to take a look at what's been done, confirm it visually, and then we'll address it at a meeting to officially close out. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I'm going to poll the commission quick. All right. This would be a yay or a nay. The yay vote would signify that we believe they can make a field addition to the current order of conditions to put in a retaining wall, to replace the existing retaining wall, uh, contingent upon receipt of, of, of basic construction methods and plan um, and additional proposed erosion controls. Right. So, yay would be, it's fine that they do it that way, as long as we get those things, and yay would be, you'd prefer that they go the RDA route, or you just don't want to see this project done, take it from there. So, I'm going to start with you, Jeff, Brian. Yay. All right. Kip. Yay. Emily. Yay. And it's yay for me as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, once we receive the methods and the erosion controls, um, they'll be put in place once they're okay, which I imagine if it is within the realm of what we we're talking about, they will be. If not, we'll come back and have a different discussion. <coughs> um, if it is within the realm of what was discussed this evening, the order of control will be put in place. I'll come out, take another look, and then issue a letter that says you're good to go. Um, and then you can replace the law. <laughs> And dispose of the railroad. Uh, yes, properly. Yeah. <laughs> so when, what is properly? I don't know what properly that is. That is what you I have leave it up to the uh, folk art. The folk art is what I got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. <laughs> We're back. Part two. So you've already opened the public hearing for the approved yeah. Proposed improvements to the existing driveway. Good evening. There. And for those who weren't out earlier, there's there's four separate things being proposed here. We're gonna open all four at once so we can kind of talk about all four at once because it's all in the exact same resource area. Yeah, that makes sense. So have you done that? What do you have to do? Uh, I would do it He's real quick. He's only done the common drive, so they'll have to do In like the next session. three. <laughs> All right, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass Journal Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetton Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a notice of intent submitted by Sam Lavery of Goddard Consulting regarding the proposed construction of a single-family home on Lot 4, Century Mill Road, the public meeting to be held this evening, September 18th. And the Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Button Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider the request for determination of applicability submitted by Sam Lavery of Goddard Consulting regarding the proposed minor grading associated with the construction of a single family home located at Lot 2, Century Mill Road, for public meeting to be held this evening, September 18th. And the Bolton Conservation Commission will now also hold a public meeting under the <laughs> public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider the notice of intent submitted by Sam Lavery of Goddard Consulting regarding the proposed construction of a single family home on Lot 3, Century Mill Road, the public meeting to be held this evening, September 18th. We have with us Scott. All right, let's do all four of these. 
So I don't, um, was everyone here at the last hearing we had on this one? Or do I, should I recap it kind of from the beginning? Oh, sure. last one. Uh, I think everyone was here. Okay, so okay good. So I'll let, should I let you start? Would, it, would that be best or? Yeah, so I'm just gonna touch on a few things that I had sent via an email inquiry, I guess, and sure. you can just sort of start there. Okay. Um, so some of those items included pre and post calcs. Were those looked at at all? I do know the engineer is looking at that. I don't know if he's created a report on it yet. Yeah, so I can answer that question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tackle that one first or? Well, I guess I'll summarize. Okay. <laughs> um, the other so were related to the potential vernal pools that show up on the Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program survey overlay on uh, GIS. In addition to that, we have been made aware of some excavation, which while we were out on the site visit, I just said, um, I'll basically inquire to the commission, and I guess we can address that portion last, as to we can wrap that into the current notice of intent because it was done in 2016 without any permitting within the buffer zone um, or under the wetlands bylaw, the adjacent upland resource area. Um, so those are concerning, to, that was concerning to me because it was unpermitted work. Um, in addition to that, we're out on the site visit today and we're able to see what thankfully flagged some of those areas where the single family home and the septic were. So if you just want to touch upon the current, um, I guess, conditions of those lots, which I think sure. we'll run through anyways, sure. that would be beneficial. So Scott Goddard, Goddard Consultant, professional weapons consultant. So I have, I have um, let's see, three, four sets of plans. This is the common driveway plan that we presented at the last one. This has the DEP file number 112. 0666 and the other applications one would be for lot two which was an rda so that wouldn't be issued a, a file number mm -hmm. lot four and lot three has set separate noi applications submitted i gave the green cards to um, rebecca and the plans are, are colored on the back side of this so we can look at each lot individually so first the uh, common driveway this was the application submitted showing 12 foot uh, wide pavement. So basically it's a, right on top of the existing driveway. And the driveway, I would call it variable width between 10 to 12 feet, depending on how you define the, the shoulder, <coughs> which are kind of just kind of soft plowed gravelly edges. So the idea would not be to widen the driveway of beyond what's <coughs> it's utilizing that same footprint, but paving it instead. This, this showed drainage. Uh, utilizing a series of swales to hold some runoff. Now the site is very, very flat and doesn't get a lot of pitch for drainage. I mean, that was witnessed today. We had, you know, we had two and a half inches of rain in about a one hour span today. So there's a very intense storm on top of a very high groundwater uh, season that we've had. Um, who could remember a summer as wet as we've had this summer, right? So we got to see a, a kind of a I would call it a mean annual high water condition for a one year storm event live at the peak. And then the water will now begin to subside uh, now that the storm is, is absent. But we, what we were able to see is that along the edge of the driveway, there's lots of areas where there's puddling um, because of just the, the poor soil conditions and the flat topography. So for a number of reasons, we, we sort of have been questioning you know, what these swales are going to accomplish beyond just kind of what's there is what's there. You know, as it right, right now, it either puddles within ruts on the driveway or it just sheets off to the edge and puddles on the edges of the driveway. Uh, particularly here, there was a good sized puddle, and here there was a good sized puddle uh, today, but a lot of little ones throughout. So the planning board has had similar questions in their review about the drainage. They wanted to see the, the analysis of pre and post. So, and that's going through peer review with a uh, professional engineer who's peer reviewing it. So the engineer, Scott Hayes, has produced a new plan, which I have a copy of here, and I'm going to give it to you guys tonight, which basically is the same thing as you see there, but instead of doing the swales, just limit this to um, pervious asphalt. So all the 
storage of water would happen within the, a 12 inch um, crushed base or you know, 12 to 15 inch crush base of you know, three inch stone. So that would be the volume storage area. The, I think it's a good creative um, way. He's done a lot of projects. And what it does is prevents the need to widen to create those swales. And so if you've been to the site, you know there's a host of fairly good sized pine trees right along the edge. And under this scenario here, there would be uh, you know, some, uh, I, I, we, we do have a survey of, of the trees uh, now completed also, uh, but it would require some tree removal to do this in grading. The benefit of doing this responds to the comments raised by the commission and the planning board about kind of, kind of being sensitive to that, that layout and doing something that's very low impact for drainage and maintains the trees along that driveway edge um, as much as possible. So I submitted a copy of this. It has today's data on it. It's kind of hot off, hot off the presses. And this same plan will be submitted to the planning board as well. This is also updated to, to show the cumulative project as opposed so this, this previous plan that I gave you here just showed kind of generic septic locations and, and, and whatnot. This plan here, which has the common driveway, and uh, the chairman, um, you know, rightfully made some observations today about you know understanding the project in, in totality. This plan does that. It it it, it helps see everything proposed on one sheet. Uh, so you can see the, the proposed common drive, the, the existing five acre uh, house lot, you know, intact. This whole side of the driveway, intact and the, the three proposed dwellings and their proximity to the wetlands. Was this proposed, the new proposal for the driveway, one for just receiving these plans? So, yeah. And the planning board hasn't even got these yet. So it, right, it, right. So it, it, this is really the other, so was, that a, was this a result of the engineer's pre and post calculations comparison? It was a result of making it easy to satisfy that request. Okay, Yeah. sure. Because when you have such something so flat, it's uh, the calculations are challenging to, yeah. to you know to produce something that satisfies. But this is very straightforward. Okay. You know, it's permeable, full storage underneath it. You know, it probably hold you know, the 50 or 100 meter storm even just in the in the void space. I have a question. You had talked about the trees. I haven't yeah. come to the site, so. Okay. Um, if they're, are they in close proximity to the driveway? The ones, so if you're excavating down 19 and a half inches, right, for this pervious um, driveway, mm -hmm. how does that impact? I know you were talking yeah, about I, trying to maintain the trees, but I would, ex I would um, suspect that now we're getting into the tree roots, right? So this is probably going to be hard to avoid. So we may not be, I mean, with that impact the trees and I'm not saying I think this is a great um, option but I'm just curious about if we're trying to to maintain the, the old growth trees that are there and now we're excavating down 18 and a half inches adjacent sure. to them I don't know how many feet how close we are but I feel like that's going to kill them well right? the, the, if the, we're the, cutting out the roots I do know that the pines like to make that base, you know that kind of you know base root and then but you know they they, they will have some trees that are going to be really tight up to it yeah. are going to have probably some root impact. And yeah. to, to quantify that fully now is hard to do until you right. get into it. Um, but most pine trees can sustain some limited root damage along their edges. So I don't think this can promise that it would, it would never result in the long-term loss of a pine tree or mm -hmm. a couple of pine trees. But the goal, I think, is to, just to minimize and to keep it as small as possible. I mean, if any pine trees along the edge of any one driveway, I think, falls, at some point, they're going to probably want to treat them, remove them, cut them, trim them, et cetera. So your point's a good one. And I think there'll be some, probably some unavoidable uh, root damage. And not all of the trees are right smack on the edge. You know, okay. they're five feet, eight feet. And, you know, that, that distance away makes a huge difference. Right. It's just right. going to be the ones that are right, right, right up tight that yeah. I think have the most impact. And those ones, there might be a couple of those that have to have to come down anyways. So, but I think it's a good, 
That's a good point. No, if you are like if you are cutting half of the root base for the ones that are close, does it make sense to keep them? I mean, then how does the tree stabilize if half of it's? That's we get question. into tree removal? Yeah, yeah. So because this just changes things, like from a excavation standpoint, going from a three three inch paving right to mm -hmm. nineteen and a half. Right. Um, I don't know how that impacts. I don't know tree. So in terms of we obviously do have jurisdiction over the natural resources within the buffer zone adjacent upland resource area. Um, the bordering land subject to flooding, the wetland resource areas, um, areas adjacent to cold water fisheries within the riverfront area, etc. But we also have in our local bylaws consideration for trees that have a 12 inch DBH or higher. Um, in terms of preserving those. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly something that I can imagine as they're looking at this, they'll need to consider. Uh, in short, I can't say, just as Scott was saying, that once you remove half of trees' roots, it's probably gonna die, especially right. because some of those trees are quite mature along the driveway. And it's because um, of safety, you know what I mean? A safety issue, yes. and yep. I'm just going, down that road. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Does it need to be paved? If we just establish a need that it has to be paved? That's the the, the zoning bylaw. Calls right. For that. But, but for like for conservation, um, a single family driveway does not need to be paved, right? This is only if we're putting in a. This a is new that subdivision. Lots, what would you right? call this? It's a common it's a common, common driveway. driveway. I, I, but is it you said there's a zoning bylaw that if you're doing something like this you have to put in this kind of driveway? Is yes. that what you're saying? So if and that's we can attend a planning board meeting. I did attend the last planning board meeting. Okay. If you wanna get into the specifics about planning or zone board of appeal type jurisdiction, but they are required and I did check in on that with a town planner to create certain structures or stormwater structures or have certain grades or have certain right. material <coughs> driveways because of various statistics that go into it, whether it be passage upon it or Because not. you know, my, my, that was sort of the question, because I, I looked at the driveway that was there, and, and you're right, there were puddles, but it was because the driveway, well, from my untrained eye, the, the, the puddles seemed to be there because the driveway looked like it hadn't been wasn't level, and if the driveway were level and crowned, the water would have gone off. Sure, you know. But uh, you know, if if this is a um, something that the planning board needs to that needs to get done, done then well, not necessarily. So they're saying what to clarify: if they were to approve this project, a project with more so with two houses, you could have a shared driveway. Right which could be just gravel, right? to my understanding. Um, a common driveway, like I said, needs to be a little bit beefier for various reasons. So because More of driveway. the amount of lots that are proposed, they need this type of a driveway oh. to propose it because you can't propose one without the other and expect this area to go through. This is just like a, okay. a pull off. So if someone's path. coming in that direction, got it, mm -hmm. got it. And then what is the um, the shoulder here? What is that? That that's this material here, granular fill and loam and seed on top for that two foot just, shoulder just on either side. Something on it. Some some defines some edge because you end up disturbing it a little bit. So it's just sure. it's just feathering in the edges or all that. All I think that's really indicating. I'm just trying to figure out for the project, right? So the drive is originally built. It's a single family house. That yes. one house in the background. Yes. Did they own these lots and they're splitting? Have they been, did they sign into an agreement to split their driveway yet? Is it be hoped to go back to them and ask them to split their driveway? Have they already signed off on splitting their driveway? That's, I get, is this already so the, the, this the homeowner? Is, well, it's before the planning board at the moment. Okay, yeah. but, but as far as for us conservation, the homeowner, it's a single family house with a single driveway right now, right? Correct. It's not approved for anything else. Right, but this, right. Right. No, 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 I just want to make sure, because that's one of the things that we have to, we, we have to go through a checklist, and one of them is, 
you have to prove that there's a reason to right. change it. I understand. Right? right? Yeah. And right now, if nothing else is approved, and this is a single family house, single family driveway, right. it's hard. But I know that's so why the, we the, have the six hearings in front of us. Is the, wetland, um, the wetland regulations talk about filing for or obtaining yep. the other um, applicable permits. <coughs> so yeah, um, in order to hear a, a wetland a permit, doesn't have to. I got you. already signed off by the other agency. I got you. It has to be well, applied for. It. Right, it, is, right. it has been applied for. Which makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So you want me to? You want to stay on the driveway, or do you want to, me to talk about the? Uh, well, I have a question, sort of related yes. to the common driveway that yes. was brought up at planning. So you probably have an answer. Um, I know there was an inquiry about reducing the number of lots. Do you know if Scott Hayes has gone back to ask the property owner? I know he was requested to by the commission to see if they would reduce lot three right. entirely. No, the, the, there is there is not a proposal to remove okay. any lots, and so this was. I know that he had to work very hard to, you know, make sure that it meets all the, the zoning, you know, the, the frontage and the sure. areas, and and it meets all the. The, the wetland laws. So the, the proposal is is a good one. I don't. Th I think that um, the you know this excess land with these lots. You know they're not just the minimum kind of size and you know areas and all. Well, and this is obviously an oversized lot. So well, it's, it was to say, what are you going to build there? It's it's all well, wetland. I was going to say they're not going to build in the wetland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. I don't know what we're trying to prove with that. Yeah. So the answer is that's not a proposal. Okay. It's not a proposal to remove any lots. Okay. Sure. All right. So uh, why don't I go into the I, I can, uh, Yeah, I can do, leave, do you want to leave the this out? I can leave this out for a kind of okay. orientation purposes. That's probably a good one. And then we can look at the individual ones. So I guess so we have two, three, and four in that order. So the order, I guess we'll look at them as Two, three, four, just to match what I have here. So, two is the RDA. Mm -hmm. And I think two could be built even without the RDA, but the areas in green would just be the areas that would um, squ kind of square off the lot. And the common driveway comes up to here. So, if the work, you know, didn't propose anything in this one spot here, and didn't propose to move the shed, I think it could be even a non-RDA. But since this is um, you know, right up at the front of the driveway, uh, it seemed to make sense to include that as minor buffer zone work. This is also, this little triangle of land here is basically up on the driveway edge. So remember that this is the gravel driveway that surfaces the existing house. So that would be um, riverfront area uh, uh, to Dan Danforth Brook, mm -hmm. that, that piece there. This would be wetland buffer. Um, this little corner would be uh, wetland buffer. And then this would be wetland buffer uh, where the shed is. The shed, the shed splits lot lines. So the presumption is that it would be relocated to one or other, the other side of it. So really it's a seeking a, a negative uh, determination of applicability for that lot. That's a lot. Well, I was just going to say with that, well, with, with a few things that we can talk about in order, um, I'd like to know where the shed's going to go ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, not that it may be moved to one, maybe moved to the other. It seems like that should have been thought out. Okay. Um, because you're going to have to move it. Now, this is not so much a vernal pool, but it looks like a vernal pool right there next to the shed, right? That's that huge Depression. Well, yeah, I mean, those are at the front of the shed. Right, so right, right at the front, right as it right. comes in. It did. Right as it walks that's through. Around. The frogs jumping all over. So then that's like right here, right? But we don't show anything coming off of those because they're not certified and they're just considered floodplain or. So we did. So, go ahead. Two things first, and then Scott, you can get in if you don't mind. Um, so, a vernal pool is not necessarily bordering vegetated wetland, it's not technically a wetland resource area under the Wetlands Protection Act. Under our local bylaw, it is a resource area 
in the fact that it's a vernal pool, supports the breeding of various vernal pool species. And in addition to that, the 100 feet around the actual vernal pool potential or certified, which are both covered under our local bylaw, um, is habitat area, which is also protected. There's some variation on, not variation, there's some allowance for tree removal within that 100 feet from the resource area, but not to build in. Um, so these are two areas, I think I said it at the last meeting, I said it at the planning board meeting, um, because they pointed out similar things, and now after going out and looking at them again, they may in fact be upon further investigation. I don't, I can't say at this time, but what we do know is there were two points shown on the Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program survey overlay showing the two potential vernal pools. Um, it also showed the certified vernal pool, which we talked about in the site visit today, that's just over the line in the Boy Scout area, yes. And that would lead me to believe that there are other vernal pools not that far away, but again, sort of leaving it open, but also knowing that a potential vernal pool may exist, it may not, but under a local bylaw, it is protected. So I don't know if you yeah, so clarify. The, um, you know, the, cert the certified pool, you know, maybe we should have went and, and looked at it mm -hmm. a little bit closer, but it was, you know, the, the, most of the pools in the area are substantially deep mm -hmm. at, at this point to, to support that. The, you know, these areas have some uh, temporal puddling due to um, the heavy rains that we just received, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like that even <laughs> 24 hours ago, you know. And so so that that's not surprising that we had, and I and I measured the depth of about you know anywhere between one to three inches, uh, you know, in the area. But we also saw um, a number of other uh, puddles outside of wetlands throughout the site of similar depth. So um, that you know gives me you know, you know a high level of confidence that you know what we're looking at is is you know some some storm uh, you know related conditions on the site right but we're talking those, those two potential vernal pools because i didn't see anything as if the puddles weren't as deep as those two potential vernal pools those were significantly deeper they looked to me than some of the puddling and ponding that was well, going I, on. Well, after, after you guys left, I went back and you know, you know, I just measured the depths of the yeah. different areas. To, and, and so that the, you know, we, we so think was, talked yeah. about is yeah. what was actually holding the water, but I would agree that topography-wise, they're deeper in terms of the areas. And then in the two areas that they're pooling in those gravel ditches or previously gravel ditches, I don't know how they were formed, um, there was significant water being held there, which may or may not support vernal pool. Right. And I was I was talking about so you know compared to the depth that we saw right the puddle right. here and here right it was of a similar depth and I and I measured that after after we left. So what were the measurements? It was all about three inches. Do you have the measurements with you? Yeah, I mean I have pictures on my phone that I can print them. But you said you measured it. Yes. So do you have the measurements? Yes. Do, do, in like a month ago was was that all dry? Yes. And so it, vernal pools can. Yeah, I, I understand, but I mean, I was looking at that. It looked when I was out there today. It looked very wet to me, and it looked, you know, it didn't look like. I mean, I know we had a lot of rain today, but it didn't look like there was, you know, the, because of the rain we had today, those things filled up. But you know, I'm not a, a civil engineer. But it looked like the water had been there for a while. At least the the, the frogs seemed to think so. But um, it just looked like it had been I, there a while. Yeah, there, there were frogs in one of those. Too, yeah, right? leaking there, all over the place. Yeah. But I, I I'm just saying that that's that's all I'm saying. It doesn't look like they were puddles. They look like I don't know, but something bigger than a puddle. You know, there were puddles on yeah. the on the driveway. Those were puddles. But these things look like. Big puddles. Oh, exactly. bigger yeah. puddles. Like puddles. Yeah, yeah, small. I don't know. Vernal puddles. I don't and I, and I, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I inspected a couple of days ago, and it was all dry. Well. <laughs> but uh, the, but I think you know, with the with the shallow depth in, in in quick response to the large storm, that 
indicates to me, and also my direct observation in the springtime, was that the, the water is very, very temporal in response to, to, to events. Uh, it doesn't mean there's not saturation yep. that occurs, you know, at near the surface. And lots of events too. You know, and lots. Of, we, you know, we've had lots of events this lots year. Lots of events. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't know how to do something other than what we have done legally through the ANRAD process. The um, the purpose of the ANRAD, and I and I remember inspecting these areas, you know, prior to the ANRAD, during the ANRAD hearing, and I'm pretty sure uh, that uh, Rebecca and I looked at this uh, even during, well, while we had those hearings going, um, you know, that there, that's the, sure, that's the but purpose of, of the ANRAD is to do that, and, and there's, there's been a number of, of cases that have come up, up in history that have dealt with these kind of, you know, can we, can we kind of revisit the findings of the ANRA after afterwards. Well, I was going to say, but in this one too, like our our town bylaws consider things that are possible vernal yep. pools, right? Yep. Whereas the ANRAD wouldn't necessarily need to point out possible vernal pools; would only need to point out certified vernal pools. Correct. So I, I would sort of back up from that. That is true to some extent in terms of what the bylaw covers versus the Wetland Protection Act covers. In terms of, and I mentioned this to Scott previously when I asked the question about the potential vernal pools via email, um, is, and saying, you know, we may need to have a site visit just to go out and relook at these areas. Because when you look at the detail on, and I'll go back and take a look at the ANRAD, I mean the ORAD that was issued as well, is that it lists the specific resources that were approved. Mm -hmm. Vernal pools or potential vernal pools were not one of them. Um, so that's what I personally am going to be going back and looking at and in fact seeing in the ORAD if it issues any mention of that specific resource because it specifically mentions every other resource that was approved and shown when we're out there with water plots. I remember looking for uh, bordering vegetated wetland and other wetland resources in addition to the riverfront area, the cold water fishery. So I'm just going to double check that on the red. Right, and um, so which is a simple answer, and I can <coughs> look at that. And it's well, I'm pretty, I pretty. I mean, I I double checked it myself. Okay. You know, mentioned it. Obviously, the, the O red doesn't you know mention every negative out there, right? So there's not a list of every non-existent resource area. Um, right, that's and, not what I'm saying. So, so typically what I, you know. And yeah, but I mean, we're not talking about something, we're talking about something that's physically there that I think we cover under our bylaws. And you might argue that it's not covered under our bylaws, that that's not suspected vernal pools. But I went out there and looked at those. To me, I consider those at least worthy looking into, especially with the frog activity in one of them. The, um, and j I mean, just anybody who could look at that could possibly say, all right, you know, it's, it's not like a little depression in the ground. It definitely looks like a well-defined pool. It looks like two really well-defined pools. And again, one had amphibian activity. So I get your point with the ANRAD, but just because it didn't mention something that we cover in our bylaws, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist out there. And I know it exists out there. I've seen it out there. I saw it out there today. I, I, I wonder, you know, if there's any history of how that depression got Made, whether that would make a difference. It does not. It, it does, does not. not. Yeah. So even if somebody 20 years ago dug that hole out because it was... And it supports vernal pools. It support, okay. That was, a, the only, that was the question I had. That was the whole area. The, um, to, and to follow, just to follow that with, a, with some of the thoughts on that, in the, the, the ANRAD yep. application, it, it, made, it makes a specific request. And so, you know, I, I've probably filed, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of ANRADs on sites. And it's not uncommon to say, I'm requesting an ANRAD for BBW only, for example, or BBW plus BLSF, or BBW plus Riverfront Area, or recognizing that I want BBW plus bank, but I don't want BLSF and Riverfront Area. And you can specify as an applicant what the request is, and then the response 
of the ORAD is in response to the request. Mm -hmm. So the, re the request in this case, and this, this is very carefully looked at, you know, whenever you, you have this before DEP, what was the request of the ANRAD? And the request in the ANRAD was all resource areas under the bylaw or the act. So then the, the finding that, uh, that, that come from that is, is, is a response to the request that comes in uh, by the applicant. And then, actually, I found one of the, one of the uh, case laws that deal with this issue um, that this is a quote from a, a, a final decision of DEP. It says, this, this rule barring collateral attacks on a wetland delineation, and this is referring to this kind of issue, incorporated into an unappealed order has been upheld by the Superior Court as having a rational basis. Quote, it provides necessary certainty enabling citizens to comply more easily with regulations while planning projects in close proximity to wetland resource areas, end quote. And it cites another case, Tompkins versus DEP 2012. In, pro in proximity. Right. right. Okay. But this, this, to me, and I'm not, I'm not an expert, you know that, exactly, but this looks like it was right in the middle of it. It didn't look like it was in proximity. It looked like it was, you know, and, and again, I, I, I just, what I saw, it looked like it was right in the middle of the project where you're going to put the house. So it, 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 maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm being a little overly, you know, but it, it did look like, to me, it was right in the middle, you know, and, and it was, it obviously wasn't a, you know, boulder that got took out, took it out in the old ice age that, you know, something else would happen, something looked like somebody was in there doing something, but that's why I asked the other question. <coughs> uh, it made a difference that somebody dug it out 25 years ago. You know? Yeah. Okay. So, that so but that's, it, to me, that's what it looked like. You know? Is it and, not on the greeting? It's not captured on the greeting plan? Because on this lot, all I see is high points. No, you wouldn't. Uh, it, maybe it's the not, next right, lot. So it's established over because my, it's on another lot. It, I don't, I'm not sure if it's drawn on there. Because these are all, like, this This is a high point, yeah, high point. Big, it's basically like high right point, here. high point. Here. I mean, it kind of okay. goes all the way Lot four. along the back there, and the shed is on the banks of it. Like the shed, it kind of goes yeah, down the bank. This is the other half of the shed. So yeah, this so was—it's it's basically here. It basically is going to get filled. They're going to need to fill in the what I would, you know, what is a possible vernal pool, suspected vernal pool, is just going to need to get filled in. That's what he said. Is that right? Right. That's so right, but it's not. It doesn't show on the existing grading. Is what my what my question was. Oh no! Yeah. yeah as, as no, how no, no, no. I'm looking at the existing. So yes. This, this I'm looking at the existing lines. Three fourteen here. There's a three twelve that basically comes around the whole. Yes. So it, that, it that does was, show it on the plans where it shows the total um, number of lots proposed. If mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Heck, on this one. Uh, yeah, we see, yes, we can see here. Oh, you know, this, this shows oh, 3.11, right here. Because okay. this is one for a of, um, Got it, it's right here, where it's on the two lots. So, <clears throat> it comes. Yeah, and it's low, it basically goes low all the way to the property line, okay. right? And that's where it finally starts to come up hill. Okay. So regarding I think, those two questions, I just want to double check the ORAD, take a look at it um, in terms of the potential vernal pool location, potentially reach out to just natural health and see a little bit of background on how they choose their areas because like we talked about as well, sometimes they choose areas that aren't, sometimes they choose areas that are and without a GPS pinpoint where they could potentially be. I mean, I personally did not go out with a GPS unit to say these two spots. I was looking at the topography, which those are the only two spots on the lot I could yeah, see I mean, potentially. I, I do which, know how they do. I mean, they, they look at topography. Right. They also look at uh, aerial photography. Yep. They look for, you know, any dark spots in aerial photography. Okay. You yep. know, sometimes they mix them up with tree shadows and stuff. Right. But other times they, you know, they pick out, you can kind of see where areas tend to be. You know, Sure. And they, they try to do it to springtime photos and whatnot. So that's that's you know so the combination of topography and aerial photos is really good. Okay. Another question I did ask, and this is sort of related to vernal pools, but 
more so, and I'm not disregarding that question as of right now, but I just, you know, am trying to be mindful because we have a few other things to address this evening. Um, was there any calculation? I know we just basically asked about the total alteration to the resource areas. Were th was there any totaling that you were able to do to insight within that? No. Probably not. Okay. So I, I know that. We have this, yeah, we have this revised plan. Right. So I know that would be helpful, certainly, to just see, you know, it, whether it be in a chart format or not, lot one, lot two, lot three, lot four. Um, existing areas within the buffer, alteration to the buffer. Right. Um, and I think that would be helpful for planning board as well to see the environmental impact that they were questioning. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, my question is also related to wildlife habitat. So the potential vernal pool aside, again, not disregarding that, but just what we have here do you meet the threshold, or did you assess the threshold for wildlife habitat assessment? Right, so so the wildlife habitat assessment would be uh, if, if the BLSF area <coughs> was over 10% um, 10, 10 of the lot area, if it's within the 10-year flood plain. So I think probably that is a good lead into lot four. Okay. The, answer, the short answer is that, that um, we're going to be underneath Okay. Those numbers. Uh, I'll I'll give you those numbers in a nice chart. So, so yeah, I mean, just something that's very it all easily. In, but, right. So this is lot four. So this is the next one over. Here's the shed, house, septic, all the both outside of resource areas. Um, the, the green area is um, the portion of the lot that would be utilized for um, um, creation of all the lawn. That's within buffer zone. So there's offsite PPW over here, and the 25 foot is here, uh, wetlands here, 25 here. The only close work is access to the well site, which is sited to be a certain distance away from the septic system out of necessity. Uh, over here, where there's room to have a larger uh, vegetated buffer zone, it's, it's kept intact. And there's only this 326 cubic feet of floodplain um, grading for the septic slope breakout, which was then compensatory storage of equal volume immediately adjacent to it. So that's just reconfiguring the very upper sliver of floodplain line okay. and, and creating a similar uh, volume amount uh, immediately right next to it. So this is a, a notice of intent application, but we do not need the threshold to tr be presumptive to be impacting to wildlife habitat. On the entirety of the on the, project. On the entirety. Okay. Yeah. And I will give that to you, to you in, a, in a chart. Um, and then did um, Board of Health weigh in on the septic systems yet, or no? That's open with them probably, I would assume. Right, that's not, I mean, they've, they've witnessed the testing and they, right. they haven't yet issued their approvals. Okay. And then the last one is lot three, which is the one closest to Century Mill Road. So when you come in off the existing driveway, it'd be somewhat immediately off to the right. And this 310 is the floodplain line, so there's no structures or septic within the floodplain, all on the high spot, relatively speaking, um, you know, on the site. And it, this house would be partially within the buffer zone. That's this colored in area. The 25 foot is back here. And again, the only part that's close to the 25 foot limit is access to put in the well. Other than that, the buffer zones are kept substantially wider than 25 feet. Um, only what's necessary to get around the back of the house and grade up the septic. So that one has no floodplain impacts for grading, only this little bit of green right here for tree removal. And that would be part of the Okay, I was going to say to include that. Yes. It would be nice to just see the 25 foot continued, even though it's off the lot. Yes, yeah, so it's on 75. Just that line. So, under our local wetlands bylaws, um, the no disturbance area is 25 feet adjacent to, or the first 25 feet 
of the 100 foot buffer area under the Wetlands Protection Act and then the next 75 feet under our wetlands bylaw is a resource area and it's an adjacent upland resource area. And is that drawn on there, the aura? How the aura cuts in across the line? Yeah, so this dark green is the BBW. Yeah. This purple one is the no disturb buffer. Yeah. And then the balance of it is so the entire house is in our buffer zone? Yes. Uh, the entire house in the buffer zone? No. So 75% of it. 75% of it. So this oh, so, uh, yeah, I, I missed the so, front. So, okay. so this portion is the So the base. porch is not in it. Well, yeah. The port, well, the porch is not in the, in the over, front. We'll say over 75% about approximately. Yeah. And the septic is all outside. Outside. Right. And then, but over in here, you know, the, you know, that's probably 50 feet of, of, um, Vegetated buffer. How big of a system is that? A four bedroom. If you were to put in a tight tank, could you get the house out of the buffer zone? The DEP doesn't allow tight tanks in the of size new construction. I didn't know that. What's the smallest size system you could put in to try to get the house out? In other words, when we're looking at other plans in the future, is there a way to shrink the system to get the house further out of the buffer zone? That is, I mean, that, that's the only spot. But if we did like a two bedroom house or a three bedroom system, would that shrink it and pull more of it out of the buffer zone? You, you still have to have the overall footprint. But to, just to answer my question, would it pull more out of, if it was a smaller system, would more of the house be able to come out of the buffer zone? Probably, I mean, incrementally, there might be some small amounts of changes, but wholesale wise, I mean, you have generally this septic site. Right, but I mean, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I get a 75 foot buffer zone and I can get 20 feet of it back, I want 20 feet of it back. I, if you can, that happens right. because of a smaller system, then I'd like to see plans that include the smallest system possible to get that house out of the, I mean, the whole house is in the buffer zone. The whole idea is to keep everything possible out of the buffer zone. I mean, we're putting an entire house, and I don't even see the runoff from that house. I mean, you're gonna have a roof. There might be a some, yeah, Hopefully there's gonna be gutter systems drawing everything out of the buffer zone. I mean, are they going to have, are they going to want to, is this going to be a backyard? So their entire backyard's in the buffer zone, all grass? It sounds right. like lot three, the commission may want to see an alternative analysis done on, yeah. just by the sound of it. Yeah, I mean, there may be some room to reposition the house in a way that, right, in the, that would get out of the buffer zone? Slide, slide. Yeah. And again, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're tasked with the three things. Avoid, minimize, mitigate. So number one, can we get you out of the buffer zone? Understood. If we can, yeah, we can. We can get you out of the buffer zone by moving things around and shrink things down. Then minimize, minimize your footprint in there. Again, a smaller house, a smaller system minimizes your footprint. And mitigate, we really can't mitigate back there. It's all floodplain. I can't have you reestablish a wetland. It all has to be floodplain. And it was all flooded today. I mean, it's functioning floodplain. It floods on a regular basis, which is all going to be thrown by putting that house in. But seriously, I mean, get it out of the buffer zone. I, that's the biggest question I have with this one is why a four bedroom house? The whole house in the buffer zone? I mean, what kind of thinking was that? The whole idea is to get the house out of the buffer zone. I, that's just my initial thoughts on this one. Like, right, so really? We can, look, we can look at some, um, see if there's an alternative. Sure. Yeah, I mean, what if the driveway? What if we put the house over here? What if the driveway to cross over here? You put the house here. This whole section's out. How about putting the house over here? And just have a little driveway across. I mean, we can take. We'll take a look at some. I mean, I would see. I mean, the, the idea is to stay out of the buffer zone, not build convenient houses. Understood. No, I, I, I mean, I, I get. I mean, it makes I, sense I, how it went in, but it didn't look like there was any thought given to keeping it out of the buffer zone. It looked like it was just, yeah, four bedroom house. Right off. Okay. And I, 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 you know, I hear you, whatever. I hear you, I hear but, you, I hear all right, but that, that's just an initial concern I have with this one. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I'd like to see, if possible, switch in the future, or at least to see some alternative plans. So I think we can avoid and minimize on this one. Right, but, so I submitted the new, Go ahead, please. You know, I submitted a new driveway plan tonight. The other ones don't have the file numbers. I'd, yeah. like, I'd like to, you know, provide some of the additional information being requested of you. Sure. Um, you know, to it. So. I don't expect we'll be closing meetings. No, and, and, and like I, I got to say, and I can't speak for the rest of the commission, but like I got to hear about the, the driveway first. Like if they if they don't approve other lots, then we go back to you know this is a single family driveway, and we don't even have to look at pay. I mean, it changes everything depending on if it's two houses in there, then it can stay gravel, and we have to think well, about I, that. I guess it's not two houses. Another way to think it might be that you know you 
you're approving it as compliant with the wetland laws. Yeah. Um, but it, it obviously can't be constructed unless both planning board and the conservation oh, sure. board approve it. And board council. Right. Sure. Uh, yeah, everybody definitely has their say, but you know they're not always looking at what we're looking at. Um, I can say, um, just for the board members that weren't at the planning board meeting, they do have a line in their bio, bylaw that states they have to take into consideration the environmental impact. So they are taking into consideration the environmental impact, and those were some of the questions that were asked at their meeting as well. Um, so it does show that other departments are also concerned with the impact to this area. They specifically brought up the resource area of the cold water fishery, potential impacts there with development and reducing the canopy. Um, in addition to sort of a totaling, which I just mm -hmm. was requesting a more clear, um, I guess, display of that information. Is Danforth a cold water fishery? Correct. I didn't even think of that today. So it's, yeah. All right. Um, any additional questions currently for either four or going back, three, two? But okay. this one needs to be solved first. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's definitely some questions, but again, things are still in front of planning, so there's still things getting worked through. Um, so if we can come up with questions for Scott Tyner or alternative things to look at or something we'd like to see. You know, the more things we can get to them tonight, probably the better. Well, seeing a, a alternative layout for lot three is a definite. Um, I, I mean, even if it means a smaller house, <laughs> I mean that plot just can't take a more house, house. Make the house smaller. We make it higher. And, and on our end too, I, I need to have, and I apologize that I don't have a better understanding of our bylaws um, as as far as the, sus the suspected vernal pools. Mm -hmm. um, if that's what they are, and you know, if that's what we consider them, we'd obviously want to see that captured into the lots as to where the lots are, where the houses would go. I think those are the only initial questions I have. I just want to turn over the audience quick. Uh, I'm assuming you have a question. Is there anybody else tonight with questions for this project? All right, if you could state your name first and then your Richard question. Davis, 185 Hudson Road, Simon and Butter. And I've lived. Um, in that property for over 20 years and I'm very familiar with this end of this property um, because this old cart path that's right here um, you know I used to walk that a lot um, when I went to the Worcester County Courthouse and looked at the deeds for my house um, I, much to my surprise I saw something in there where some of the old Falcon Farm the mineral rights were deeded to Boston and Maine Railroad. So they took gravel out of these areas, I'm gonna say around 1870 or something like that, basically to build the railroad that runs through the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. You guys know, you're familiar with this? I know this railroad? Yeah. 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 And the rest, it's by yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So there's other excavation areas, you know, within the Boy Scout Reserve where it's obvious that, you know, they came in and took gravel out. Um, all I can tell you is I've heard frogs in here. I mean, every spring it was the cacophony of frogs. Um, and your question about, you know, well, I only saw frogs in one thing. You know, I'm thinking about strip mining. You know, they, they have brand new dirt and nothing's really growing on it right away. I mean, it takes a while to develop the sort of vegetative ecosystem for the vernal pool be before it becomes something that the, the, the amphibians are interested in. Mm -hmm. And it looks to me like this was all braided out, topsoil pulled to one side, topsoil put back. So if anything, right now, the soil drains better than it did two years ago because before there was a layer of organic matter on top that was preventing water from percolating, you know, as fast as it would right now. Mm -hmm. It's practically raw, you know, raw material. Um, I mean, think about pouring water through your coffee grounds. When you first pour it in, it goes right through. After a while, it takes a little bit of time for it to work its way down. Mm -hmm. So there is no question in my mind that those were vernal pools. Now, I'm not a certified ecologist, but as I read Massachusetts' definition of vernal pool, it says if water sits 
in a basin for two months, it's potentially a vernal pool. Only two months a year, and it didn't say which months. Right. And it also says that it can be dry for most of the year. Mm -hmm. But if it's there for two months, and they said particularly in the winter and the spring, well, you know, I can look across the stone wall and look into these basins, and I can see ice in there in the wintertime. I mean, there's water collecting. Um, I mean, if you had lived here and done a survey of this over the course of a year, I don't think there would be any question. Um, that you would come to the, as a, as, a, as a wetlands ecologist, that you would come to the conclusion that, that those were vernal pools. <laughs> I mean, amphibians were living there. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what makes it a vernal pool. So, all right, that's about all I have to say about that point. You know, talking about this lot right here, there was no mention in the video that I sent you of the flood from 2010. And that's just, I happened to be out there with a camera to film it. And that was extreme. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near living in that house at that point so, in time. Um, I, have, I have seen the video. Yeah. Um, and this is where it gets up, because this is the, the USGS floodplain. Yeah. I went out there today, and, and you know you could see there, there were definitely differences, little differences in topography. Scott's better at spotting. But yeah. You know, to say like this is the floodplain and this isn't the floodplain is ridiculous. It's flat. It's flooded currently, but in pockets and areas. So I can see that. But when it comes to addressing floodplains, like I saw that flooding, I was like, I, I drive that road all the time. I live in town. I drive that road all the time. I watch it flood. Um, we have to go with what USGS has established as this is floodplain. This it's just you know, with ice jams, those photos weren't taken because of ice jams. That was just a heavy rain. But when that ice jams up underneath the bridge. Um, man, it's it's a real mess too. So, and then and then what happens? You know, this house gets flooded out, or its or its septic system gets all messed up because of water. And then that's water, you know, potentially polluted water in Danforth Brook. I mean, okay, it might not conform to USGS kind of somebody's schema map or whatever it may be, but just because it's not on that map, do we ignore it? <laughs> And well, maybe the law says you have to. Uh, and I hear those concerns too. It's, it's interesting that Title V allows this construction of, of this septic system inside yeah, a floodplain. You can actually I build systems that. in the floodplain <laughs> under Title V. And in this case, the system is not being proposed in the floodplain. So, so I, I think the videos, you know, it's are, are taken, you know, of the area in the floodplain. But, you know, that, well, that's what they're... So, personally, regardless, it's showing the floodplain at full capacity, whether it's over tap, overtopping the capacity or not, totally possibility as well. Right. Um, but like Brian stated, you can clearly see it floods in the videos we saw. It was exponentially flooded. But sure. again, that's why FEMA establishes these floodplain sure. areas. Right. Um, and those are the lines that we are given. But yes, we do know that they flood and they overtop those areas, whether it be from the pond side over, sometimes even from beaver activity, um, or the opposite manner in these. Yes. No, no I, didn't, I wanted to let you get your statement, but I did have a question. Sure. The flooding replication area that you're doing, Scott? Yes. So to take. Right. If we know and we have video evidence that that already floods, is it still appropriate to use that as floodplain restoration area? If we know it, I mean that's not in the USGS floodplain. If we have video evidence that it regularly floods with the rest of the area, saying well, I'm going to take away floodplain here, but put it back here. But we know for a fact that this is already floodplain. You're yeah. then you're taking away floodplain and not replacing it. So, I guess it'll fit in the USGS map, but it won't fit in what we have for field observations or... Right, so in order to actually have FEMA alter their flood maps, it's a lengthy process. Mm. Not lengthy process, but it, it takes time, um, and it takes contacting different individuals, and there is there is a process associated with that. Yeah. So my short answer would be locally take it into consideration as we're 
looking at various projects if something like this is to come up, where it is to come up. Um, but also, if the commission wants to pursue something like that, they certainly can. But again, understanding that it's going to be processed and they may not in fact change it. Even though that's known to flood, they may have reasons that it's not considered within their FEMA maps. Right. It's hard to create new flood well, but this, this uh, that you just gave me, it doesn't address how the federal flood came into existence. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's how it functions right. now. Yes. Right. It's, so right. and it's, it's so in 1875, if somebody dug a big pit. It's now a habitat. It's now yeah. a habitat. Yeah. Yeah. If in 1975, somebody well, dug a big pit, it's now a habitat. Right. Last year. It's did. like it, you could have a fire right. pond that someone dug in the 1800s or the early 1900s, and now it's become a habitat for specific, you know, for, for different and that's For example, normal. on our conservation properties, we have quarries, we have kettle holes, we have right. all different types right. of yeah, things know. that were formed. Well, kettle holes formed geologically. Naturally, but, but right. Um, kettle you know, the quarries right. can become vernal pools. Right. The cave that we have on Rattlesnake right. is a vernal pool. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just I, I wanted that brought up because it, you know if it comes back you know around saying oh this was dug up by somebody building railroad. I don't railroading. think that's an argument. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just want to point one other thing out here too. What's this? You look at the inner inner line here. Okay, the one that goes all the way around. Yeah. That says three eleven on here. Look at what's going on here. They. Backfill all kinds of soil in here and get his house in this location. It's now, I mean, it just kind of flies in the face of any kind of rules and regulations. If you can just bring in dirt and fill in a hole and put the house on top, I have a lot of problems with that. Um, I mean, even if it wasn't a vernal pool. <laughs> uh, so. Okay. Uh, one, I have one more question. Please. Who did the wetland survey on this? I mean, did you do it? Did I do it? Did you do the wetland survey? Did you have any questions? Yeah, I, I, we do oh, take so questions from the audience. If you'd like them to ask us the question, yeah. ask, ask well, you the question. Okay. I, okay, so they please ask me a question. Sure. Who did the wetlands analysis, and is that person who did it financially an interested party in this development? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very good question. And so it's a two part question, so if you don't mind. Could you let us know who did the wetland um, delineation? Uh, not delineation. The um, uh, yes, what I'm sorry. delineation. So you're basically filing the ANRAD, and part of that process is doing the resource area delineation. It's an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, and it receives an order of resource area delineation, um, and this was done by Goddard Consulting and by Scott Goddard, who's a wetland scientist, or by a... I, you know what, I would have to check. It's been a long time, because... I think just, it was one of your... We, yeah, because we were on hundreds of projects, of and I yeah. can't recall if sure. this was me hanging these flags or someone else. Yeah. Right. Or it could have been, or it could have been a combination of... Well. So, irregardless, at that point, um, there wasn't, we don't double check property owners, we don't look to see, okay, who purchased the property, um, because that's not within our jurisdiction to do. Um, to my understanding, it's an LLC that owns the property, um, 21 Century Mill LLC, so it's, a, it's an LLC specific to the property. So until we have an applicant before us, sometimes we don't know who the, delineated, the delineation is being done for, aside from the name on the LLC, which sometimes, like we had someone come in at a previous meeting, they did a deed search and it backed up to no one because it's an LLC, that's why you put it in an LLC. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or not. 
How did, did you know how long, oh, ago, yeah, we, how long ago that survey was done? Uh, was it like a few years ago? It was last year. Did, oh, it was we, last year. Okay. Did, yeah. It was almost a year ago to the day almost where, yeah. where, where the ORAN was issued. Mm -hmm. right, so, we, check that. so we saw, you know, this site and multiple, you know, conditions. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. It was good to see it after, you know, a, a big rain event. We saw mm -hmm. it last year. We didn't have the kind of weather we have this year. Right. You know, so. This, I feel like this is just bizarre from like a design standpoint. You, you, I mean, it's I did worth going on. You have a chance to go and take a look. You tried before. to balance the cut and fill. You didn't bring in truckloads of dirt. Well, I think bring the, the put the house up. You know, the seven I, feet from the existing grade. The idea was, uh, you know, to, to you for know, drainage. To, well, to keep the keep the you know keep the house out of the buffer zones. If you if you, if you look at the at the plan. You know, I know we have to look at that a little bit more on lot three, but at least on that lot, that lot there, you know, this house and septic are completely out of the buckets. Right, right, but the existing grade here is at 311, and we're bringing it up to 318. I just, that's, it's all driven by the... I by the know, septic? I guess, I guess yeah. so. Well, there's a lot. I mean, that's a huge depression that's going to have to be filled. Right, but I'm just, I mean, that's bringing a house up seven feet, oh, bringing oh, the existing grade up seven feet. There's lot three. That's lot three, yeah. Or four. Lot four. No, this lot is four. four. You can probably do the lot basement foundation. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not okay. Specific. You know, I mean, it's probably ways to. Got it. Yeah, it's trying to be a basement. Treat it like a. Right. Yeah. But, you know, to the, to the I think there was a question earlier about, you know, lot three, you know, keep the house outside as much as possible. So that was yeah. accomplished yeah. here, I guess. Right. But I know that I have some questions to answer, so yeah, say I'll yes. so request to continue this out. Absolutely. Within that information, please add in the narrative about the excavation that was done. Yes. And so then the commission can consider that at yep. the next meeting as well. And I'll do more research too on the uh, on the vernal pools to the question mm -hmm. of how we consider, can we consider, should we consider. Okay. Um, but just so you know, if, if it's possible that we can consider those vernal pools as possible vernal pools, I can't speak for the commission, but I would lean towards certifying that as something we consider a possible or suspected vernal pool, okay. which is what it okay. says in ours. But just so just so you know, if, if it's legally possible for us to say those are uh, we suspect those are vernal pools, can you draw your plans with showing those suspected vernal pools and hitting the buffer zone off of that? That's how the way I want it done. If legally we can't ask you to do that, then you don't have to. If legally we can't ask you to do that, I'm asking you. Uh, I show where those I vernal hear, pool I is. The you know, the questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions? <laughs> that we think's got a hundred thousand things to think of. I have a comment. That, Please. You asked a few really good questions about the trees along the driveway. Mm -hmm. Maybe trees of a certain diameter could be drawn in, and then you would really know what was going to be cut. Mm -hmm. um, we have that survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we have nice gotten some. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, when I see a white pine fall, I mean, a tree that's two feet in diameter, the roots are shallow. I mean, right. it's not like there's a tap root that goes down and sneaks this thing up. Right. Um, so, I think to your point of 19 a, inches, yeah. that's the 19 inches of life. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> You're okay. Okay. All right, so do I have to read my individual or can I love this? Um, you can lump it, but you have to list each one. Each one. Right. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we continue the public hearings for the notice of intent for 21 Central <coughs> Mill Road proposed improvements to an existing driveway, as well as for the notice of intent Lot 3 Century Mill Road proposed single family home and septic system, as well as um, Lot 4 Century Mill Road proposed single family home and septic system. And finally, lot two century uh, the RDA for lot two Century Mill Road proposed grading associated with single family home and septic system. Second. Uh, until our next meeting. October second. October second. October second at seven thirty. Is that fine? But right. All right. October second at seven thirty. October. Oh. Hold on. October second. Uh, October second at seven thirty. Seven forty-five. Seven fifty. Then eight o'clock. Yes, that they're continuing to our next meeting October 2nd 
at 7.30, 7.45, 7.50, and 8 o'clock. Yes. Nato here, second. second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I ask you, I had a question. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Sorry. It'll come back in your dreams. Yeah, it'll come back in a minute. You will. <laughs> okay, so we can get that one. You did? Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. I remember the question. What? I mean, we're doing these four things separately. Is there a process that we can try and do by the next time to bring them all into one? We would have had to have requested that, yeah. so you can request that next time. Next time, time. okay. Um, so. Because it seems silly to me. Well, yeah. Yes. But we so, also might be able to do one law next time or two, depending. Right, so okay. the reason why, you, like Scott was explaining up the site for the was you can certainly request that it all be proposed on one administratively in terms of closing out various lots is a little easier to have it separated because then you're not issuing four partial certificates of compliance if it's approved because otherwise it creates a lien for the entirety of okay. all the homes versus one. Um, so I could see an argument both ways. Okay. You're talking about lines only, but I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thanks. Next up, uh, discuss point Take your time. Did everybody have a chance to look through the minutes? Yeah, I think it was well written and perfectly accurate. <laughs> any any and, updates, and changes, no updates problems? No updates were other than it says draft on here. All right. Well, it has to be approved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for our, our September fourth, twenty eighteen meeting as currently drafted and submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I mean, the outstanding items and updates that can be discussed this evening. So is, is it best now, or is there something you want to tackle at the time? It is best to do so now. So, all Please. the table. If you wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. How are you? Okay. Good. This is the uh, wetland purification area that we uh, walked in yes. last week. And we talked about this one area right here that I highlighted that has a 36 42 inch red oak and a old pine that we kind of like to save. So what we'd like to do is determine this actual area in the field with Rebecca when we're doing the excavation for this wetland replication area and excavate a comparable area in square footage that's adjacent to the site that doesn't have any large trees. And we could do it on site with Rebecca so that you know the area is the same. Uh, I think it would save those huge trees that were there and we can stay away from the root systems that way. Mm -hmm. And this area was flat and there were not any trees there anyway, so it would be a good area to replace it. We have our contractor, Dave Smith, scheduled to go in there next week, uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. And do you have a contract with him or some sort of documentation showing that he's in fact coming in on that date? I think. Yes. Okay. We have the plants 
we're audited from Quebecios, so we'll be putting the plants in AFTA. So we expect to get the topsoil boom mix from uh, sterling peat, the compost and topsoil mix. Okay. So and you said the excavation is to be done next Wednesday, Thursday, the latest? Yes. And you're going to send me the confirmation of the contract. The contract. Anyway. And then the plantings will be done. We'll do them immediately after. It's a perfect time. Immediately after meeting Friday? Uh, or during well, that same day? Uh, probably Friday or Monday. We'll make sure that we do another site visit with you once it's graded. Okay. adjacent site that we looked at. We, we put some uh, serpents up there the other day ahead of this rainstorm, which was good. Uh, and we'll have, we called a couple of vacuum trucks. None of them could really go like 100 feet into the woods that we need. So uh, we're lining up some laborers. So we have five or six laborers to do most of it by hand. And uh, we'll be there Thursday or Friday this week to take care of it. Okay, it has to be complete. This Friday. Yep, yeah, it'll yeah. be all done. So it'll be done in one day. Okay. Um, I'm back up for a minute. Regarding the silt bed. So I'm going to come out tomorrow and take a look to make sure no more material has migrated from that slope. Um, I sent you the site visit report mm -hmm. stating why I'm going to be looking at that specifically. Um, in addition, I'm going to back up even further and sort of walk through the property, how we walked through it. So regarding the replication area, um, we have the work being done Wednesday, Thursday, excavation, planting, Friday. Um, we're going to have a site visit to follow the excavation before the plantings are done. And then... Did you remove the rebar and the material from those basins? Not yet, no. Okay. We'll, we'll do that when we're out there this week, though. We okay. removed some of the debris that was in the end, Yeah. but not the rebar. We need a larger truck. Did you remove those wood? The pallets, yeah. Okay. So I won't see those tomorrow? Nope. Okay. So the rebar, are you going to be out on site tomorrow? Uh, no, it'll be, it'll be Thursday or Friday this week. Okay, so Thursday, I expect that rebar to be removed. Yep, we need a 20 foot, the 20 foot bars, I guess, up there. Yeah. So we need a trailer. Okay, or bring something out to cut them. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, we'll be out there with the trailer anyway, so. Okay, so Thursday, rebar is getting removed. So now I'm going to go back up to that slope. Um, so we have an issue with that slope. So aside, aside from the rep replication area that's been taking some time, if I get a contract tomorrow, great, that work's going to be done Thursday. Like we just went through the timeline, I don't need to go through it again. Three bars removed. Um, the slope needs to be addressed. To me, that that's a priority. I don't know what other the, sites that you have. get washed out. Yeah. So, so I, what I did was I ordered eighty yards of stump grindings. I don't know if you've ever used them before, but I have on some of the construction sites. Yeah. When we take out the stumps on the site, they grind them up, so they come out and kind of like wood chips, only they're longer. They are, you know, they can be up to 10 inches, 12 inches long. They're much heavier. Uh, they grind all the stumps up when they leave the site, and it works as terrific stabilization mulch area that I've used on sites before because it's much heavier than wood chips. It won't float away. So we're going to grade that whole side slope. Once we clean out all the silt, we'll regrade everything, and then we're going to cover it with up to a foot of these stump grindings. And that'll stabilize the slope 
and it naturally turns into decomposes eventually and uh, you know turns into topsoil and sort of grows naturally. So two items on that. You know, I appreciate that detail and you know once the slopes brought back to one piece because again I was honestly horrified. Um, what was out there because I, we were here to look at the replication area and we weren't even going to go and look at that area and so once it's stabilized I'm okay if you use the stump grindings to basically hold it together my question is though um, what was originally proposed there because I spoke to Fred Hamway somewhat briefly on if he has any suggestions on how to stabilize the slope um, on what was previously proposed there and what he was stating is that it's not necessarily a retaining wall but rather riprap to along the slope there mm -hmm. so my question is I understand the house was placed further back there's a riprap swale not swale but riprap um, against the slope there but even there there's some erosion it's in the upland area so it stabilized by the grass but you can see where it did erode a little bit um, i'm concerned that that rip wrap wasn't in place and maybe it's the cost i don't know but that should have come before concom to establish no, this isn't being put in. Yes, I'm putting stump grindings instead. And I know I mentioned that on site. Um, but that's just like, I'm not sure if you saw earlier this evening. We do consider field amendments. Mm -hmm. When people come in and request some slight changes because of specific reasons and the reasonable requests, and we establish that. Um, it just wasn't done. It wasn't in place. And that's another reason why I can't stress enough. I don't know. And I'm not even going to speculate the amount of other work you have or what's what you don't have on in other towns. This is here in Bolton. You have material, significant amount of material that moved from that slope, which should have had a riprap barrier or stabilization on it, into the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Which, as you heard from our past meeting, that's a resource area under our local bylaw. Um, so it's a violation of your order. And again, I can't stress enough, and I know I'm reiterating and repeating myself, that needs to get done, and that needs to be addressed before your other projects. Honestly, I, this is a priority, and it should be a priority. We had it happen on another property. They dropped everything and remediated this issue. So from... The, from my perspective, being the individual who supports the board in the regulations, whether it be the Wetlands Protection Act or the bylaw, that is egregious to me and where we've had it addressed and remediated on another site. And nothing's, I mean, you put the um, silt fence up, which is great before the rain, awesome. But that slope shouldn't even look like that. Well, I agree with yeah. you. We will take care of it this week. We wouldn't have been able to do it before the storm. Like I said, we had to line up some labors and everything else. We tried contacting some bathroom drugs, Action King, a company, Tewksbury, and another company, and they mm -hmm. could not provide what we needed. Okay. So I agree with you. I agree with you also that the driveway is so long, the water was rushing down, and we're thinking of using those sump grindings along the side too, to stabilize the edges of the driveway. We think that'll slow everything down and work as a rip wrap. Yeah. I think once we're done, uh, you know, we'll give you a call and I'll meet you out there for site inspection, make sure it's to your satisfaction and we'll go from there. Can I ask right. you a question? So what, yes. Yeah. Does, do these stump grindings, you know, when I think of rip wrap, I think of rocks that are a little yeah. hard to move. Right. When I think of stump grindings, even though they're 10 inches, it seems to me that it's just heavy duty mulch that in a big rainstorm eventually over two years is going to wash away but the rip wraps are not going to wash away right so yeah they, if if the it, and, and i'm not familiar because i wasn't involved in the beginning but if along that wall you had rocks that were stabilizing that thing that slope mm -hmm. it seems to me even if you put down 10 feet of of, of stump grindings 
It's going to, well, you know, two years from now, it's going to be gone. Or decompose, and now it's just dirt. It's going to be dirt, and it's going to be gone. Now no, it's, it's, it's going to be gone, because it needs, it needs right. like a, I've said enough. Thank you. Well, so here's, I'm yeah, sorry. to your point. No, don't be sorry. Do not be sorry, because you are correct 100%. So what I'm considering, and maybe to clarify, in terms of stable, you're not permanently stabilizing a slope with um, stump grinding. Yeah, so. so what I was getting at, and I'm, I'm sorry because I'm very distracted about the amount of material that was moved, um, naturally moved, but shouldn't have been moved, um, is the fact that I'm looking at once it's the materials cleaned up, the slopes regraded. There needs to be sort of in increments. So the slopes are regraded, that area is remediated. You place a new silt fence and hay bales at the toe of that slope or a little bit distance, it gives you area to work. Then you put on the stump grinding. So whatever you need to hold that slope together, but per these plans, until you come forward to the commission and say, I need a field amendment that says I don't need this riprap slope. I'm still looking at the plans that are before us. So, like, just like we asked you to bring in this dis display or description of the slight change to the replication area and the commission while out there, we said, yeah, we want to save the natural vegetation that's there, which was very forward thinking. Um, you know, just provide us with some documentation that shows us exactly what you're planning. Same thing, this is a field amendment, which the commission can take a poll on um, shortly if there aren't comments after, but this is the kind of thing we need to see if you're going to propose something other than what's on the plans. So whether we see that at the next meeting when you, when the um, request for extension is potentially considered or well it is considered but whether the commission issues it or not that'll be addressed then but in terms of slope stabilization if you want to wait on the riprap and you stabilize it temporarily with the stump grindings that's feasible to me but i'm 100 percent with you on that's not a permanent solution and it's not on the approved drawing and it's not on the approved drawing so you need to come forward and request again a field amendment if that's what you wish to do is to stabilize it with something other than what to propose well if you if you think uh, i frankly think it's better than the riprap slope you know because of the voids and the crevices in the stone i think you end up with some wash out and everything sure. or, and frankly i've had great success with the stump grind you know how tough a stump is and when they pull it out and they grind it it's all intertwined together. I don't have any objections putting the riprap there instead, if that's what you think is best. That was yeah, what's so, on the plan, right? Yeah, so what yeah. I'm saying is what's on the plan is what we go by until if you wish to propose something, <coughs> you can, but we need to see something like this, just like you did tonight for the replication area. Um, that's all I'm saying. Okay. I'll, I'll do it the way it was on the plan. Okay, that's fine. That way we don't have to do it twice. Yep. Um, We're done twice. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have more comments? I was just going to see if anybody was here. I don't. So we just worked out our timeline just to clarify again. We have the, well, the remediation work you have until this Friday, the 21st, to complete. Um, then you are going to place silt fence and hay bales and the stump grindings, um, even temporarily. Or if you're going to do rip right, right away, bleh, rip wrap right away, you may do that. Um, and then next Wednesday, Thursday, you have so that's the 26th, 27th. <coughs> Um, you have until then to do the excavation and then the planting will be done that Friday right mm -hmm. and then the rebar out is sort of backing up on that timeline is this Thursday 
and I will send you an email that in addition to the statement that was made at the end of the site visit report which you received previously um, just stating that that is what will bring you into compliance mm -hmm. the outstanding items um, unless the Commission has other comments to make on that and then if that's not complete you have your deadline you just created your deadlines and that's what we're going to stick to yep. Cass, is anybody here tonight to comment on this? One forty six. Yeah. So long. If you could just state your name first. Sure. Uh, I'm Lauren Silly at 147 Long Hill Road. Um, I guess I have a couple questions. I don't know if you can see the plans you're looking at. I'm not clear on what which um, slope you're talking about. That so it's on lot five. The last. Okay, house. the last one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's where he added silt fence the last couple of days? Because there, it doesn't seem like there is. So it's at the base property. of the slope. It's not, it's um, it's basically in the woods. Okay. Um, where it was added because of some material had moved from the slope. Okay. Um, so was any on your visit or anything discussed about, and again, it's hard not seeing what you're looking at, but the, so all along the driveway there's erosion because yes. it wasn't seeded properly and all. Mm -hmm. So is is that part of what's the plan is to have done too? Yeah. Or? So that's more so related to what planning board covered in their recently established letter um, or recently issued letter that we did touch upon on the site visit and pointed out those exact same areas and said this needs to be remediated. Mm -hmm. And we were told that that work will be included as well. Okay. And we did, for, just for the record, we did tell the planning board that when we came out to do the work for the conservation in September, we would have the equipment there, to, you know, when we would see the site. To fix the erosion that was there. Okay. Um, this is public, right? Is it public? Are sharing this? So, uh, yeah. So you have the deadline now to um, remove the rebar by Thursday. What about some of the other debris that's all on there? There's um, irrigation piping, there's trash in the soil. There's a lot so, of trash at the end between lot five and our lot. A lot of trash was buried there, material okay. trash. So within the site visit report, um, I can double check if it's listed in it, but I will certainly include that. Yeah. To just clean up the material because I do have images of actually from this these eroded areas that show exactly what you're talking about and actually in addition to that I don't know if this you have the these slips from where the film material came it, huh? from Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Or if you have documentation or you can let me know where it came from well, that way. if you want to look through your file the bill that was placed it basically used road. no so the fill that was used within the common driveway development that was brought in yes we have a lot of material okay so if you can just via email forward that to me and let me know that would be and great when we have a guys out there thursday friday we'll walk the whole site and pick up any trash yeah and so um so can i just say one moment one moment um, so this is what I'm looking at specifically, like this metal debris, this is on that slope that eroded. You have some granite that looks like someone's front step, um, which is fine. And then there's some plastics as well, um, like this here. But just items like that. But if you can provide me with the material, the, the information of where the fill came from, which you should have on record just email it to me and that would be great so um I, i'm just curious maybe answer you just state your name first sorry melissa, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry melissa Salina at 151. Thank um you. so uh which would have been lot three i think we're lot three so that space i'm talking about between the end of our lot and lot five um that is was covered over so there was there's a lot of um trash underneath there that was covered over with dirt, and now there's like weeds and stuff growing on top of it. So if you're looking at lot four, the end of their driveway, like kind of across from that, there's kind of like a hump of dirt and weeds growing. Okay. And that is, that there's tra all trash and all kinds of stuff under there that was covered over with 
dirt and is growing weeds. That's just there. And okay. so there's visible stuff, fine, if that's gonna get cleaned up, but like this requires a lot of removal of dirt plus all of the trash that is buried there, that they just got thrown in there and buried over. Do you have documentation of this by any chance? Um, sure we do, I can look for it. Yeah, if you just want to forward okay, that sure. and then yeah, and really all along the driveway, like it's it, it, there's trash you can see that's right there, but unless it's like chunk up and removed, I don't know how you would even get all of it out. But I mean, I'm glad you're you know that's been now promised will be done. My other question, I guess, and I'm, I'm not sure again if this is you or planning board, but um, stumps and rocks and dirt were dumped along the side of the driveway um, back in June, I believe. We have documentation of that. Yes. Um, when will that be removed? So to my understanding, Walter, that's to be removed when the replication area is done, just right. like the tree over the swale at Stormwater Mansion Area 1, which is the swale when you first come in, or the farm when you first come into the property. Um, that was made clear at the site visit as well. So that's inclusive. So of is that. that the end of the month then? That's that date? That, the yep. time of that? Okay. Yeah, so that should be removed by the 28th. Okay, and then so I just got, I haven't had a chance to read this letter that we were just given the site visit, but so if this is not completed by, this is the, I don't know, now I'm just, the date where So the, the timeline? Yeah, it would be the 28th. So the timeline's going to be updated, so basically that statement specific to the remediation, well the remediation work will be done prior to September 21st, meaning pulling that material that migrated into the buffer zone. Um, those other items will be, I don't think I put the 28th on here. Oh yes, I did. So what we're going to be doing is basically updating this to reflect the timeline we talked about this evening. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will be reflective of what our deadlines we're working with. Okay. And then um, well, two other things. One is is the seeding of grass and all along the driveway part of what will happen by the end of September? Because uh, like we have pictures that it was like some seed, but then hay, and then more soil, and then no grass seed. So there's it's all weeded. So we're hope, what we'd like all those weeds to be plucked properly seeded so that it stays. Right. So what we're <coughs> concerned with is certainly the erosion along the edges of the driveway, mm -hmm. um, which. That should be inclusive in when the replication work is done. Um, so I would say, yeah, that's a safe, yeah. a safe estimate to say it'll be done by the end of the month. Okay. Um, regarding seeing any vegetation growing in terms of grass or anything, it depends on the weather. Right. It does. Um, it should be seeded though. Once right, and seeded properly. I mean, that's the. Yep. So, and the plants that were going in um, September 28th, are those yep. replacing the ones that never took? Or what No, the so regarding were? the plants that um, never took, there were really two dogwoods when we were out there that didn't take. Those will be replaced. Okay. In addition, um, any vegetation that is damaged or removed during, or basically in the process of gaining access to the replication area will be replaced and they'll be within the two year growing period as well. So once they're planted in the ground, they'll have two years to grow. If anything fails within that period, it will be replaced um, upon the commission's request if it's not done beforehand. In addition, the replication area is a separate area um, specific to wetland replication exactly what it sounds like so it hasn't been planted already it hasn't been excavated already so that's what we're talking about that project's going to start next week okay mm -hmm. okay um and then so i i'm really appreciative that you work so seriously on this and getting this going um but i just you know based on track record so he'll be fine if this work isn't done by these dates and then when is kind of when will that fighting end and something else happen? So if this isn't done by the end of September, then, you know, what So if it's not that? done by the end of September, like it states in the note, um, this is basically the first step saying, 
you know, you're in non-compliance, but we understand you're willing to create a hard deadline schedule. This is, again, very general. Um, come before the board like he has this evening and say, these are my steps. This is what my schedule is um, to come into compliance to address these outstanding issues. If, in fact, it is not addressed by the end of the month, just like it says in the letter, the commission has the right to retroactively fee a fine, which is $300 per day per violation, and retroactive meaning, I think I list on here, back until the site visit, which was the 13th, so last week. So it is to his benefit to get this work done. Mm -hmm. uh, because not only is it the end of the month would we be retroactively fining, but then every day after that, that it is not in compliance. Um, in addition, there are, you know, at, at the end of the month, this work should be done. If it's not done, I understand the planning board mentioned to me their concerns as well about work not being done. Um, if it's not, we'll probably be addressing the same thing that planning board has started pursuing, and that would be continuing with any sort of necessary enforcement if it's not in compliance by the end of the month. Um, and then once those three steps that are done through our enforcement process, which this is basically step one notification informally, they've come back and responded. So we would notify again, you're non-compliance. And then we'd notify with a certified letter. And if there was no response back, then we would start um, other enforcement. Um, so it is, again, to the benefit of the individual to get this work completed, especially now that we've sat down with the commission and established hard deadlines that are manageable and feasible um, within the applicant's own ability as well. Any other comments right now? Well, is there, I mean, like, should, is there anything else we can do to make the I don't know, clear, like, should we go down and start weeding so you can see where some of this, the issues are? I mean, I, we're hesitant to touch anything because we don't want to, like, yeah. but at the same time, so much has grown over some of the issues that I don't know that you can even see everything. So I don't want to touch it and, like, mess something up, but I don't, I want it to be clear where the issues are because a lot are kind of hidden now. So in terms of what's jurisdictional to the Conservation Commission, for the most part, these are our hard deadlines this evening. These are our major outstanding issues in terms of specific wetland-related issues or buffer for adjacent upland resource areas. Excuse me. Um, in addition, I will be speaking with planning board as well, even more so once I bring back this timeline and say, does this address <coughs> some other issues as well? And we'll work with planning board to see if there's anything that we can collaborate on, but um, I honestly, I wouldn't encourage you to be, unless you have documentation from it previously, which would be beneficial to see, I wouldn't go around all further altering, whether it's to create a visible attraction to what's going on or what's not, um, just because it's it gets a little clouded mm -hmm. um, so I would basically send any information you have if there's any pre-existing conditions um, in addition to that I'll talk with planning board to see if they're aware of any existing conditions or have any um, data or thoughts on that as well and then go from there but I wouldn't I, I would say let's start this process, and I know maybe you've probably heard that before. So I am, I am understanding of that, but now we have hard deadlines. We're going to work with them. If they're not, it's really not to the benefit of the applicant to go against those deadlines, so let's see how it goes. Um, 
and you know we're very serious about this matter. Yeah, no, we really appreciate it. And that. I, again, something we weren't even directly out there for, but we happen to go look at is, I mean, I, I was taken aback by it, and I can honestly say there are very few things that do that. Um, so the applicant knows, and we have hard deadlines now, so. Can I make one also? I don't know if this is related, but could we, as part of this, the woods behind both of our houses, mm -hmm. there are still black pipes back there and all kinds of trash and debris. I don't know if you walked behind our houses, but two and three. Um, but there's still PVC pipe there and yeah. lots of things back there. So as part of this, we would like that also cleaned up because that's actually very close to the wetlands. Yeah, so that I would say okay, is part of the replication oh, process. Okay, got it. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't want to overstep. I don't know what's allowed at these meetings, but I, I just, since we have Walter here and I've never, we've never had him at a Can meeting. Can we just yeah. comment real quick? So you have to directly address the board okay. when you ask some questions? Because okay, that, that was my question. question. Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay, I guess my question, if it can be um, transferred, is when will this all be finished? Sure. Um, <laughs> and why the delay? I guess, but sure, as in the full driveway looking presentable and ready to go because this is three years now. Yeah, we expect everything pretty much done by the end of the month because we'll have the equipment there to do the wetlands replication. And okay, we have to loom and seed part of the side slopes, repair some of the tire ruts, reseed that. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything should be done the next couple of weeks. Okay. okay. So it would be safe to say before winter, the common driveway and all the work inclusive of on the proposed plans or just oh, well, this specific work will be done by the end of the month. But what's sort so, of the total project? So the planning, the planning board's issue was primarily reseeding and backing up some of the berm that sure. was on the side of the road, reseeding some of that issue from some tire ruts. Mm -hmm. placement of signs that they wanted, okay. uh, stabilization of a couple of areas further down the retention area at the end of the cul-de-sac, yep. uh, attaching a flared in section to a pipe in that drainage area one, yep. removing that dead tree yep. that fell down, replacing some of those trees and shrubs that have died. Okay. Uh, there were some low bush blueberries that we were not able to get last fall that yep. we have to put in. Right. Uh, and pavement that was damaged. There's some damage on the pavement, some tire tracks. Okay. Uh, that Fred Hamway during one of his inspection wanted to be resurfaced. Okay. So we don't know exactly whether we're going to have somebody to go down there and do that thermally or if we're going to cut a piece and just put an overlay. Sure. So. But that's at the very end of the cul-de-sac, and it doesn't affect the operation of the maintenance of the driveway. But. Right. So in terms of the work you just described, you expect that to be done by the end of? We're going to do it at the same time we do the wetland replication. Okay. We'll have the equipment and the bodies there. And so we can. That's perfect time to see. So it's safe to say. So we have the hard deadlines for what very specific wetlands related issues that we've talked about this evening that I will send you the hard deadlines for and again reiterate um, the statement at the end of the site visit report. But would it be safe to say by the end of October before early November, which is typically the end of the paving season, I guess, that you will have the rest of the work complete just for an estimate? Yes. Okay. Any other questions currently? Thank you very, very much. Thank no, you no, so much. Really um, as it relates to the replication area that was before us, um, most of us were out there. Um, if you remember this in the field, it, it made a lot of sense to us. It's, it's kind of moving from one side to the other. This had some big established trees. This was already kind of flat and cleared out. It made a lot of logical sense. Right. Um, so if possible, I'm just going to, because we're looking to do this as a field adjustment, right? Correct. Um, 
So we'll just poll the commission, <coughs> as we've done before, a yay vote meeting that you are fine with the new field amendment for the uh, wetland replication area as submitted this evening, and a meeting you're again, you do not want it. Um, Jeff, Brian. Yay. All right, Kip. Yay. Emily. Yay. All right, yay is well for me. So basically meeting the commission today with the alterations to the replication area. And I will send you those updates tomorrow. And I'll touch bases with them Thursday. Right. And I'll look for that email tomorrow regarding the contract from the contractor. David Smith. David Smith. Okay. Thank, Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. We were we by the property at that end of the we used to get out of the wait, 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 I just got this morning. You can tell I'm starting to yawn. Good night, thank you so much. No, thank you. That no, that's the previous owner. And that you wrestled with the last year five years. I might have to be like if like I went on for ten minutes. Uh, so like what here, kind of gutters yeah. you should put on? Yes. Yeah. And then like that's you went on like we went around the whole right. table. Right. And it's like, hey, anybody so else? Like, I want to talk about those gutters some more. Like what kind of gutters? Oh, and you're like, we oh, yeah. oh, spent yeah. half an hour on the gutters. Yeah. It's like you're so done. And then it'd be like, yeah. Kip would be like, oh, I want to talk. You should talk about this. Like, Whoa, Kip, no, no, you spent 45 minutes talking about it. You just kicked me if I should this one. Tell me to shut up. She's at 950. Oh, So, what do we have that we can? Possibly push up. We did our best. We should probably talk about the Fedshire entryway, right? That's yeah. one yeah. we definitely want to. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Uh, we'll hope we we'll see you in another week. Are... Yeah. Keep an eye on it. Yeah. We could maybe push capital, capital expenditures to next time. Yeah. And then potential grants can be next time as well. Okay. But let's talk about Fedshire quick. Is that one yeah, you should yes. definitely. Um, so, we can speak to the individual and asked without saying that the other prices the other estimates were way higher i basically asked why um I so well. no well for the extent i basically said for the extent of work that's being proposed why it would seem that this is low and then when he came back and asked about when I asked for the second repointing, um, quote, it's not even double the first. And I said, you literally have to be losing money on this, which I don't know if technically, I'm supposed to say, but ethically, ethically just I had to get his foot in the door and bolt Yes, 100%. And he's that's not making any money on this. <laughs> no, and that's what they stated as well, is they're really just looking to start a relationship mm -hmm. with the town. Um, is this a all, new company? Yeah. Um, it's not a new. Because they're right in Clinton, right? Yeah. So it's not a new. They're not new at what they do, but it's a new collaboration. Okay, like a new sector of their business. Sort of. Yeah, used to be okay. this company, and now they're. I think it was a smaller company at first, and Got now it. they've sort of created a name and a website okay. kind of situation. Oh, okay. Um, but Does that make you nervous at all? From a, from a, I guess, a quality it, standpoint. It does and it doesn't. And that's something that, that's why I asked the question about, because I said, you realize this is a historic structure. We're really looking for right. the extent of work done to be very good condition. Um, and they said they were well aware of it. And they weren't trying to belittle anything in terms of, um, you know, not do as much work or take as much time on it. And they said they're basically have above and beyond the workload that is necessary this time of year and mm -hmm. that they're already booking out into November for different jobs, but because they want to get their foot in the door and because they want to start that relationship with Bolton as from working for a municipality 
that's why Got it. they're bidding. So and well. are they a masonry contractor, or are they do they do all kinds of construction? They do all kinds of construction. Okay. They have stone masons working for them. Okay. Um, but to my understanding, yeah, they do. Do we have a referral? I just feel a little nervous. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's like two kids from high school created a masonry company, and they're like, oh, you know, that, yeah. that's where I'm going with this. Like, yeah. Is it so two they're kids not, from high school? Um, no, I'm no. making this up. I'm <laughs> no, just a little not. concerned. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, old, just, no. No. Job. I'm just saying, like, but, their price is so much lower. It's yeah. what is the experience level? Are they really just getting their foot in the door? That's awesome. But, or is, is or how experienced are they? You know what I mean? You, you, you save $3,000 oh, and a, you know, you've got to repair it in another year. Yeah. That's so yeah. they're also... That's all. So they, they're on the hook for, for warranties and, and all that kind of stuff too. That's right? great unless they go out of business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, I'm not trying to be like too... No, these are good questions. Know, no, they're yeah. very valid yes. questions. I just worry. Yeah, be downer here for Pete's sake. No, it's valid. <laughs> it's We're taking a for eight I, years, and I'm a little touchy about this stuff. It's like, so but the how did you find them? Was there. They found you. They found me. Do you think they backed the truck them. into that place automatically? So that no, no, no. Oh. So that I did. <laughs> I did think of that, but no. So. I know how we can get masonry work from the town. And they're licensed. We, we can only hire licensed contractors. I Correct. Right. And you they can also only hire said what? that what if insurance covered licensed. it, which... You so can only hire what? They're licensed, licensed. insured, yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole shebang. Yeah. Okay. So before they gave their first quote, I said, I don't know if it's covered on the insurance or not, because at the time I was just like, we need help. I have no idea what this is going to cost. Right. And they came back and said, if it is covered on the insurance, we can handle all that as well once we come up with a quote or an estimate for the work. Um, so they're well versed in basically doing this for you. Are you comfortable years. with this? Yeah. Have you met up? Yeah. Yeah, nice guys. You get a good, good vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. really I feel like they're experienced they seem like and honest. they're yeah. honestly yeah. trying to open. Okay. okay. And All right. they don't have a big gadget the... truck. No. <laughs> we got to check. They to get their foot in the door because they did disclose the fact that they're going to be reaching out to DPW about plows. And I mentioned to them, and they were like, we just want you to say, like, to let you know because we're establishing that okay. we are trying to have a good relationship with the town on across the boards but um they did disclose that and i let them know that one isn't really related right. to the other right. but they feel that you know when you start a good relationship sure. in, in a good work ethic right with that and then in addition they were giving us a 200 dollar discount because they wanted to leave the sign up while the work was being done which that was part of the original Quote, and I talked to Don about that because I know there's certain things with signs in town, and he said, well, they're doing work. That's totally fine. Okay. So. And they're uh, legal. Yes. You never know. Yeah. You know, you just don't know these days. So it's just, right. You know, you're worried about high school kids. I mean, well, no, I mean, said, you know, no, if you look yeah, at the numbers, it's like, yeah, like who from sure. Guatemala who are these up people the getting paid a living wage yeah. to do the work? Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, that's, but not, that's, that's, that's where, that's the other place my brain is going with yeah. this, but. So it seems like they have, from the conversation I had, it seems that they have large enough workload like every other. Right. Um, mason or tradesman um that they're not taking a hit that they're going to put their business in debt right um but again i think it's solely based on genuinely just wanting to have a relationship when we hire a contractor is there do we require any documentation yeah that? so they like have to provide insurance, insurance. there's okay. a specific amount Okay. That's related to that. I can't think of the amount, but there's a standard contract that both myself and the town administrator um, go through. And he, has, the town administrator, has to sign off, and then the commission, if and when they authorize me to sign off on yeah. behalf of the commission, I sign off. Um, and then it's, excuse me, just like I think it states on here somewhere. So there, you don't pay the full up front. Obviously, right. they do some, and then. Um, Get paid the rest. I'm also thinking about like 
like insurance for the work, like if somebody gets injured, like work, workman's comp, that kind of thing. Do we require, do we see that? So just do they prove that they have that? So in mean? their insurance, there's a certain, I can like an umbrella get you a copy of it. Yeah, like so they, kind of okay. every person or individual or business that the town contracts out to within the standard contract, you have to have a certain coverage yeah. regarding the insurance, whether okay. that includes workman's comp, I don't know. Um, but it, it's a significant amount of insurance yeah. that you have yeah, to have. I just mean not like a, um, construct, like construction insurance where if they don't finish the job or if it's not a good job, right. but yeah. more for to cover right. people yeah. that are working okay. Yeah. So it's my well, understanding there is, but I'll double check. Yeah. I so as long as they have, they oh, have their eyes and their teeth crossed, they have teeth yeah. 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 some of the same concerns. So the uh, 15 like employees, at least, with that at least 15 like, employees, if not more. 15 gig guys. guys. Sign up for everything, yeah. too. Come so on, you'll get paid if you pop. You don't pop. Yeah, I don't know. You have to get enough insurance. They just like pay another nine grand. Your typical, when we have somebody who is the one person, you know, responsible for the two. And that's why I think the second one was a few grand more. I think that one was kind of bad. I think that this one. This one. Yeah, that was the middle one. Yeah. And they don't need over the top. Oh, yeah. Right. You're looking at a $5,000 delta. Huh? Go for it. Because the third one kept thinking. I think that we were just saying, <laughs> like, if, if this is a re reputable company that has insurance, and why would why would we spend nine thousand extra dollars? So, Honestly, I mean, this is a great price. They gave. It's not like they were, you know, negotiated into. This is the price they gave you. They and then really I kind of do the, the job work. halfway through and say, "Oops, we made a mistake." And they are. And I mean, they. I mean, you're only putting. A, a, Twenty-seven hundred dollar deposit down on them. So if they don't finish, it's not a huge loss. Not devastating. Know, yet. This the next price up was another nine grand. Yeah. For the whole job. I, know, I mean. I yeah. And the, well, so the other side of it is, do we want them? Do when and if the commission approves this, whomever we go with, do we want them to do the? Are we contracting them? for the whole project to be done this fall or to do the pillar this fall and a portion of it in the spring because I need to know how to. I mean, I would say do the up. whole thing. Right. Their price includes everything. It's still lower than get it the done. second contract. I, I don't think you can. I think get pillars. it done. Yeah. Oh, just get it all get done. It, get it done. Four, before winter. Four freezes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah they can get it in. Does every point you do that take a certain amount of time to cure before the question. first freeze, or is there any time? Yeah, there's stuff to, cure to worry about. That? I mean, concrete's concrete, right? Concrete, concrete takes like 28 days to cure fully. I don't know if we need that. I don't know, but yeah, right. that. I, think. I mean, the stuff that goes question. on. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but. But, if, but I was just saying, if they're okay. using, if they're using reputable masons. Yeah. They should this know that if, if they don't let it cure properly and they point it, it's going to fall. Like within a year, we're going to be calling them up saying, uh, hey, this is garbage. Like, yeah. And in addition to that, I'm sure I can talk to Don and we'll be able to add a line in the contract that says, you know, this needs to be you know, guaranteed right. for One a year. certain amount of time yeah. and that whomever we contracted to we can talk to them about a reasonable timeline to basically guarantee that that's going to be in place so long as no one drives into another truck into yeah. exactly. the same. Um, <laughs> <it's possible. laughs> we, so now we have insurance on this. <laughs> so the the update on that is once it's complete, it's unless I can find a picture, which I should be able to find a picture of it prior. Um, I'm providing with the town clerk with the measurements and images of the whole structure or the structure as a whole to provide to the insurance company. Yeah. That's that question. That's great. Because I'm not going to because we can learn our lessons. Again. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised that we don't have right. insurance on you know structures within the conservation. Well, and this is this is we're so. learning our lesson from this. Yeah. Thing. Continuing that process if necessary. What happens if somebody gets hurt out on the con con? I mean, this is a. You enter the property yes. at your own risk. Yeah. Your risk. Yep. No fishing allowed. 
Well, <laughs> no. So the don't, don't, don't. Anyway, so do we need to do we need to vote on this, or do you think from our construction, do you, our, you co- need our, to vote? Okay. So, can we just do a roll call vote? A roll call. We need roll to go home now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> roll call vote. I'm just gonna pull the commission. Um, yay or nay? Yay. We should move forward with contracting Max 13 construction to repair the signage at Five Shire. Jeff. Yay. Kev. Yay. Emily. Yay. All right. Yay myself. Can I go yay with concern? <laughs> so I talked to Rebecca. There's a few things on here we're going to kick till next time. Um, is there anything else that tonight that we definitely need to go through? Discussion around 22 minutes. Oh, one item. Yes. I emailed you a question about the. Um, Seven three five me. Yes. So about the stock potential for stockpiling and the installation of a drywall, is that a field amendment that the commission would like to consider, and or is it something we would not like to consider? The reason for the drywall, I would highly recommend the commission consider as a field amendment because right now the sub pump is daylighting to the brook. Which you do where? Wait, where is this? It's so 25 main. The one right next to the comment, the pink the house. That we went to. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the sun pump is pumping the groundwater back into the brook. Is that a problem? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not, not ideal. Not no, no. I mean, yeah. I mean, yes, my son pump, yes. pumps water out of the. But okay. So, so it's it's an issue that we need to say. Well, they're proposing putting in a drywall as a field amendment to mitigate that. Right. Okay. Which is probably advisable. Like if they're suggesting yeah. something that makes yeah, there everybody There could be happy. water yeah. coming from the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sure into is. the basement. Yeah. Some yeah. Pump yeah. out. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So in addition to that the stockpiling, <laughs> they basically inquired about this. It, and both of these items would be probably six feet from the rear of the house. Hmm. So not within the area of the, the area between the septic and the house, which is literally just about six feet, um, until they do the grading, and it'll be probably about even with the house. That's why they want these questions answered if possible. The stockpiling, typically some people or some agents allow it if you wrap it, so you put it on a similar to contaminated soil. You would put something under the soil. Oh, so oh this is for soils, excavated soils, or materials? Excavated soils. Okay. What so are they going to do with the excavated soils? They just lug it up. Well, they would like to potentially Lancaster. reuse it, yep. but as of the way the order of conditions is written currently, is there's no stockpiling within the buffer zone. The entire property is within the buffer zone, so they don't have an, have an area on site to stockpile. But they would put something down first. Their question yeah. is, may we put something down first, much like a contaminated soil? There, it's not, hopefully, contaminated soil, um, but you'd wrap it much like you would there, so there'd be no movement of material. It'd be held. With How are we going to know if it's contaminated or not? Will they test it before they reuse the it? The assumption, yes. The okay. assumption is... It's contaminated. It's not contaminated. Yeah, it's not contaminated. If for some reason it's found to be, if okay. Board of Health thinks of anything, because I know they're still going through, to the best of my knowledge, hearings with them, it'll <coughs> be tested that are moved around on site, it'll be tested. Okay, but that's not in our venue. Not right now. Not right now. Be fine. Like I said, I, I think the drywall is advisable. Yeah, I do too. Like, I agree with that. Um, as far as the stockpiling goes, she's right, like there is no there's no place they can legally stockpile without saying you have to keep it out of the buffer zone. I mean, they could go in the street or, or they, they could can ask permission. Yeah, but if they're going to use it to refill and regrade, I understand. I'm yeah, just no, no, no I know, options. I know, I know, I know. Um, I mean, if it's if it's wrapped and it's it's not eroding into right, it's being contained and it's wrapped, then. But isn't this something that the contractor should have thought about beforehand, so that the so that it's part of the cost? I think it's somebody doing their own house, right? No, so well, no, the septic system is not. Oh, you know. you're talking about for the sprite. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're digging, right. digging dirt. I would think that the person who's digging the dirt would have I'm asked for that up front. 
to figure out the cost. I would so. kind of feel like the soils. I mean, I know they're going to test it, but it's been leached with sewage it's been water. The sewage for, has been leaching in there for a while. I would. I probably wouldn't want to put that <coughs> back in my yard. But, but that's just you. But the. I why think can't that, they test it so as they're excavating? They put in clean fill. In the order of conditions, it does say the material has to be clean. So okay, what are they doing with this material that they want to stockpile? That may be clean. They're not assuming. They're hoping that that's going to be found to be clean. Can Would it make it sense to, right, to test it prior I to stockpiling it? I that question. But if it is... But if it's clean, can we stop? Well, if it's clean, then that's not the it, then that's not a problem. If you, if you put, like, a blue tarp down and you dump everything on the tarp so nothing... Mm -hmm. Goes away and put silk fences around it or something right. like that. Right. But if it's dirty, then get it out of there. Then you then that answers the question. Right. So I would test it first. If it's clean, we're okay with them doing a field amendment to stockpile yes. on site so long as they wrap it. Right. And if it's dirty, if it's dirty, then well, then they no, have other problems. And yeah, yeah I mean, how many days all. of excavating? If it's one or two days, couldn't they have somebody on site testing it as they're excavating? I guess. Yeah. And if some of it's contaminated and some of it's not, they can't mix it anyway, right? Right. And so right now the assumption is that because they have to, it meets certain <laughs> benchmarks yeah. um, to be considered contaminated. So as of right now and for the minutes, our assumption and just like the applicant's assumption, it's clean. Okay. Until proven otherwise. Um, I know Board of Health is looking at the site. Got it. So that's what's before us, but I will certainly ask them to, in fact, test it. Right. I can ask that It question. seems like then they are testing it before they would stop. There's no reason they would stockpile it if it's contaminated, right? Yeah, well, we we'll don't know that it's dirty. You don't have to I will it. clarify okay. that. Yes. Yeah. I feel like yeah. it's clean. Maybe, yeah. we could, maybe we could dig the hole up, set it up to 147. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't even. <laughs> um, is it hard to get rid of dirty dirt? I mean. You, it has to go to a specific area. They don't get hard. so it's much a, of certain you know, contaminants so per a, day. Like a, so you might be put on a wait list for like three days. And then it's okay. like a super fun site. Which is what, what, what the town common was. But yeah. Yeah. these yeah. are stories yeah. we're not going to get into right now. Um, <laughs> do we have anything? Does that give you enough direction on that? Yes. Oh, the last item, and I apologize. You're fine. It's just an awareness of... Um, a notification I had received about work being done on Century Mill. So a portion of that work will be repairing part of a damaged culvert or basically infrastructure that's specific to the dam on the opposite side of Century Mill Road is near Century Mill Stables mm -hmm. further down the road. Okay. Um, that we will be receiving an application for an emergency permit to do that work to repair, and then we will be receiving an after the fact notice of intent for the work that was done under the emergency permit. In addition to that, um, if they find that there's more substantial work to be done, that will be wrapped into a more substantial notice of intent. That work is being done will be be will be done by the DPW though, so that's why yeah. it's in emergency because of the roadway. Um, just as an FYI. Oh, thank you. That is all. Okay. Hey. Kim McNamara, uh, Emmy Stubbs. Five minutes on Emmy Stubbs. Gutters? How about gutters? Love to go into gutters. You dog stop I could go for 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> I would like to make a motion that we officially close the September 18, 2018 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.